Chapter 401. Opportunities There were two mountain peaks on the island. Hei Yu and Xi'an Ming had joined forces and seized the treasures on one of the mountain peaks. They had also killed some experts from the Heavenly Temple in the Tianyue Tower. However, danger was also waiting for them. A Dao realm expert left the island in advance and waited outside to ambush them. On the other mountain peak, the fight was intense, but after some time, a winner was also determined. Your disciple, Wang Luo, servant, Du Yuan, and the inheritor of your lucky mystic realm, the little evil king, have obtained a supreme treasure. Their fate and cultivation have soared. You have been rewarded with 100 Dao principles. At this moment, the island began to shake and cracks appeared. The power that suppressed cultivation levels began to weaken. A crisis had arrived. Many Dao realm experts left the island and prepared themselves to fight for the treasures. Hei Yu and Qian Ming regrouped with Wang Luo and the other two. Do you want to kill us? Keep on dreaming. Wang Luo chuckled and waved his hand. A special pill appeared and enveloped the five of them. Then, the pill turned into a small stone and sank into the ocean together with the island. Without any tricks, how would they have dared to go after the treasures? Outside the island, Ji Dexon looked on as the island crumbled. Seeing that Hei Yu and the others had not come out, he turned around and left. He had also reached one of the mountain peaks. However, the moment he saw the treasure, he gave up fighting for it. Ji Dexon realized that the waters of the Nine Zones were getting deeper and deeper. There were many powerful hidden experts who had left behind schemes. Even if he had a backer, he would try not to provoke those people if he could. There was no need to get himself into trouble. His main goal was to break through to the Dao Yuan realm by borrowing the fate of the human race. Chu Zan was not too bothered with what was going on with his disciples. The 60-year milestone was fast approaching, and he was preparing to break through to the Dao Yuan realm. He hoped that the system's reward would be something that would help him with this. The origin Dao crystal was on the verge of upgrading and transforming, and Chu Yi and Chu Er had already transformed and reached the Dao realm. They were no bona fide living beings. However, even though they were man and woman, they were unable to reproduce. At least for the time being, they did not have this ability. After stepping into the Dao realm, their cultivation advanced much faster than any ordinary Dao realm cultivator, thanks to the origin Dao crystal's nourishment. In just half a month, they reached the second level of the Dao realm. Elsewhere, the city in the sky in the desolate ancient zone was already in a state of chaos. Ominous beings, blood fiends, and the Dao realm experts of the various races were all killing one another. Qin Ying, Ren Chongha, Xiao Liang, and Hu Tianya were all in the city. They were also fighting to obtain some precious treasures. Xiao Liang had considerable combat prowess, and also had a treasure like the Slow Vine. He was almost invincible among his peers. Coincidentally, the city in the sky also suppressed one's cultivation level. Hu Tianya had transformed into a white tiger divine beast. In this form, he was not the slightest bit weaker than Xiao Liang. The two of them could be said to be the two strongest people in the city in the sky. Qin Ying and Ren Chongha also held their own as well. Some of the Dao realm experts joined forces to deal with Xiao Liang and Hu Tianya, trying to eliminate them from the competition. The battle was extremely intense, forcing Xiao Liang and Hu Tianya to join forces, after which they defeated their opponents. After that, no one targeted them. They simply hoped that they were the ones fated for the opportunity. It was not always the strongest who would succeed. The city was surrounded by Dao Aura, and had a special protective power. Based on their speculation, this city had once been presided over by a Dao Yuan realm expert for a long time, which caused the entire city to become a treasure. Chapter 402. Supporting each other of course, the Dao Aura in the city was no longer as dense as it was back then. Still, it was now comparable to the Dao Aura exuded by a 30th level Dao realm expert. From this, it could be seen that the Dao Yuan expert in charge of this city back then had not been weak. Chu Zan suspected that this city used to belong to some family, and that the Dao Yuan realm expert was that family's ancestor. Furthermore, it was definitely not a human city. Back then, no human force had occupied a city, and human Dao Yuan realm experts remained hidden. Some probably even left the Nine Zones to avoid being hunted down by the other overlord races. Before the previous Great Dao era, Dao Yuan realm experts could freely leave the Nine Zones and head into the chaos. Now, only those whose Dao path to a certain length and width could leave the Nine Zones, which was due to the three races trying to eliminate the Great Dao Calamity back then. Fang Kong's Jade Crystal Palace had been activated recently, from which he obtained a powerful celestial race technique. This was within his expectations, and could be considered Fang Kong's opportunity. In fact, Chu Zan was certain that even if Wang Luo had not saved him back then, Fang Kong would have recovered by now. The Jade Crystal Palace was something prepared by a celestial race Dao Yuan realm expert. That person would not have sat idle and allowed Feng Kong to die, lest their plans for the Nine Zones be thwarted. In the Great Dao Communication Group, Kingslayer was about to make his move. Master, I'm about to enter the Calamity. The Kingslayer's extreme Dao of slaughter required him to cultivate through slaughter, which there was plenty of during the Calamity. Why do you want to enter the Calamity? Master, I gained new insights, and will no longer kill indiscriminately. 
I wish to seek out the true extreme Tao of slaughter, and the great Tao Yuan calamity is the best opportunity for this. There's no suitable opponent for you in the nine zones, just wait a little longer. Yes, master, Kingslayer did not dare to disobey Chu Zan's instructions. Chu Zan pondered this matter briefly. When a 10th level Tao realm expert entered the calamity, that would be the right time for Kingslayer, a 12th level Tao realm expert, to do so as well. Once he did, his cultivation level would probably increase by leaps and bounds. The calamity was the perfect place for him to grow. The city in the sky of the desolate ancient zone is not simple. I saw a peerless genius here. He's too powerful. Ying Kong popped up. At the same time, he used his Tao aura to transmit the image of the city in the sky and sent it to the group. Chu Zan was surprised. Ying Kong was actually in the city in the sky. The others in the group chat started to question Ying Kong about the situation. Ying Kong answered them one by one. He focused on boasting about how powerful Xiao Liang and Hu Tianya were, and how they suppressed other experts. It's a pity that their cultivation levels are too low. Otherwise, they would be good opponents, Kingslayer said regretfully. Many others in the group chat expressed their eagerness to enter the calamity. Since Senior Chu gathered us all in this group, if we meet in the outside world, we should help each other and overcome the great Daoyuan calamity together, Luo Xinbai suddenly said. Everyone expressed their approval. In any case, so far, there was no one with life or death grudges among the group chat members. Moreover, it was true that Chu Zan had brought them together, so they could not help but wonder if this was his intention in the first place. However, we need something by which to recognize each other. Something no one else has or will recognize, someone said. Huang Long jumped out. That's easy. I'll give each of you a time jade token and leave a special mark on it. Whoever holds the token is one of ours. Mo Tu also chimed in, make a unique mark for each person. If the jade token's mark does not match the user's mark, it means that the jade token was stolen from a group member. In that case, everyone should do their best to kill that person. The Dao realm experts in the Dao group were all excited. The jade tokens would be created by Huang Long, a Dao Yuan realm expert, and could be considered special treasures. Huang Long started to transfer the time jade tokens to the group chat members. Chu Zan was amused by this. Still, if the group chat members entered the calamity and got into conflict with his disciples, it would be troublesome. Therefore, he had to give the jade tokens to his disciples as well to avoid this unwanted scenario. I have some people in the nine zones. Don't get into a conflict with them. You'll understand when you see them. Chu Zan did not reveal that they were his disciples. This was to prevent these guys from constantly flattering his disciples to curry favor with him. Understood, Senior Chu. Hong Yuanchu and the other Dao Yuan realm experts were surprised, and wondered who these people were and what Daoist Chu's instructions were for them. Was Daoist Chu trying to maintain the order of the Nine Zones? In any case, this was a good thing. Chu Zan used the Dao aura of the Origin Dao Crystal to leave marks on his disciples to avoid conflict with the cultivators from the Great Dao Communication Group. Another three years had passed. Su Shenner was also about to break through to the Dao realm. Chu Pingfan had killed a Dao realm cultivator who had been chasing him. The battle for the city in the sky's supreme treasure had also come to an end, and the results were about to be revealed. It was worth mentioning that Ding Yu had also entered the city in the sky a year and a half ago. In the end, Chu Zan's disciples had joined forces. Ying Kong also chose to support them. The supreme treasure of the city in the sky was actually a lump of chaotic energy, and also a special Tao principle. Ding Yu and the others ignored the special Tao principle, as it was not something they had cultivated, and was rather useless in that regard. Moreover, who knew if there were problems with the Tao principle, and instead focused on the lump of chaotic energy, which was sufficiently large to split between themselves. Chu Zan decided that he would pass on more techniques to his disciples after he reached the Tao Yuan realm. At the same time, he would also purify the aura left behind by a certain fellow in his disciples' bodies. Chapter 403. Expansion of the Nine Zones, your disciples have emerged victorious and obtained a supreme treasure. Their fate and cultivation levels have soared. You have been rewarded with 100 Tao principles. After obtaining the treasure and splitting the loot, his disciples fled to avoid being hunted down. Incidentally, Ying Kong also obtained a portion of the special Tao principle, which he planned to fuse into his own Tao principle to strengthen it and hopefully advance to the fifth level of the Tao realm. Not long after, news that Ding Yu and the others possessed chaotic energy spread, and many Tao realm experts started to search for them. Some even worked together. However, Ding Yu and the others had already escaped without a trace. The nine zones were vast, so finding someone was easier said than done. It was easier said than done to find one. Moreover, Ding Yu and the others were very good at hiding. Not long after, a huge mountain suddenly rose up in the southern zone. There seemed to be chaotic energy lingering on its peak. Once the news spread, countless Dao realm experts flooded the area, and another great battle began. At this time, one region in the central zone was incorporated in the heavenly Dao laws, as well as another in the easter zone. The expansion of the nine zones continued as new battlefields and treasure lands appeared, showing no signs of stopping. 
This meant that the current nine zones was still a long way from its initial or peak size. Chu Zan was uncertain as to whether the desolate ancient zone was also expanding. On the other hand, the space where Hong Yuanchu and the other Dao Yuan realm experts were residing underwent such changes. This space was the place closest to the Great Dao, and also the place where one had to pass through to leave the nine zones. In ancient times, it should have been the place where the powerful existences of the immortal, god, and demon clans lived. It was called the Heavenly Domain, and apart from the residences constructed by the various Dao Yuan realm experts, it appeared to be very desolate and empty. Chu Zan wondered how big the nine zones had been at their peak. Had the backlash caused by the three races back then caused the nine zones to shrink by this much? Had their plan caused great damage to the nine zones? A large portion of the treasure lands and ancient battlefields had been left behind by the three races before they were expelled from the Great Dao. These naturally contained many treasures, but were also contingency plans that the three races had prepared in case they failed. As the nine zones expanded, the heavenly Dao laws would naturally expand and improve alongside it. The heavenly Dao divine tree, the spirit devouring flower, had benefited greatly from this, and its strength increased rapidly. In fact, it took many of the treasure lands and ancient battlefields for itself. This was also true for the sky shaking golden rock, and the heavenly spirit cat, which were now heavenly Dao divine beasts. Chu Zong could not help but think of Huang Long and the other creatures of the Great Dao. Were they derived from the Great Dao, or did they become creatures of the Great Dao due to other factors? All three of the creatures of the Great Dao in the group chat had been born during this Great Dao era, which seemed rather suspicious. The timing was too coincidental. In any case, if the Heavenly Dao Divine Tree and Divine Beasts were created or appointed by Chu Zong, it was likely that something or someone had done the same for the creatures of the Great Dao. When the Great Dao had been born, there had been no living beings. In that case, how had the creatures of the Great Dao appeared? Chu Zan had a couple of guesses. First, Huang Long and the other two were once powerful cultivators who had schemed against the Great Dao. After their failure, they were suppressed by the Great Dao and fell. However, since their plan did not completely fail, they eventually turned into creatures of the Great Dao. Chapter 404, Blood Flower. Secondly, when an expert was scheming against the Great Dao, that person integrated the creatures of the Great Dao into the Great Dao with the intention of using them to control the Great Dao. However, they failed in the end and the creatures of the Great Dao became free. Thirdly, during the last Great Dao calamity, the Great Dao sensed danger and gave birth to these creatures of the Great Dao and made them its guardians. Chu Zan was more inclined to the third possibility. After all, the creatures of the Great Dao could not leave the Great Dao, and their fate was also intertwined with the Great Dao. If they were considered guardians, then he had to consider how to deal with them. Would they be able to betray the Great Dao? Perhaps if they entered the Heavenly Dao, this might be possible. However, the Heavenly Dao laws would have to grow stronger before this could happen. This might be also an opportunity for the Heavenly Dao laws to devour the Great Dao. However, this all hinged on his own strength, and the strength of the Heavenly Dao laws. He would know for certain if such a method would work once the Heavenly Dao laws took over the Nine Zones. This was not his only avenue either. There was still the plan to construct the reincarnation cycle in the Nine Zones. However, he lacked a supreme treasure to support the reincarnation cycle, and the reincarnation Dao principle had to grow into a great Dao principle first. Chu Zan's Dao Realm Cultivation Foundation had been strengthened and stabilized, so he decided to focus on turning the reincarnation Dao principle into a great Dao principle. He hoped to achieve this before the 60-year milestone. Time passed quickly and, in the blink of an eye, there was less than a month left before the 60-year milestone. A unique great Dao principle appeared in front of Chu Zan. Finally, before the 60-year milestone arrived, he managed to refine and perfect the reincarnation Dao principle into a great Dao principle. Even though it was still relatively weak, it had been fully transformed. Now, he was ready to break through to the Dao Yuan realm. Su Shenner had broken through to the Dao realm. After making a brief trip around the northern zone, she quickly returned. Compared to the opportunities and treasures out there, it was better for her to stay by Chu Zan's side and receive his teachings and treasures. The nine zones continued to expand, and the great Dao Yuan calamity became more intense. As the heavenly Dao laws continued to expand, there was only one region in the eastern zone that had yet to be taken over by the heavenly Dao laws. However, the expansion of the nine zones was a double-edged sword. The additional territory meant that the Heavenly Dao laws too had to cover more ground, which slowed down the process of expansion. Chu Zan did not interfere, and allowed the Heavenly Dao laws to expand silently. In the western zone, only the northern region had yet to be incorporated into the Heavenly Dao laws. That was the Blood Fiend race's territory. Incidentally, the Blood Fiends had also been very active during the Calamity, and had obtained a large chunk of fate and treasures for themselves. When Chu Zan looked at the northern region of the western zone, he could vaguely see traces of pure demonic power. However, because it was still rejected by the Great Dao, there was not a lot of it. The demon race Grand Elder and the other remnant members of the demon race had all awoken part of their ancient demon bloodline, 
and also inherited the secret techniques of the ancient demon race, which made them more powerful. Their battle with the Buddhist clan continued. Although there were demon race Tao realm experts who entered the Nine Zones, they chose not to interfere with the war due to their confusion with which side to support. After all, they had also been cultivating Buddhist Dharma, yet were also demons by descent. It was a conundrum. Hei Yu had reached the third level of the Tao realm, as had Ding Yu, Xiao Liang, Hu Tianya, and Demon Buddha. Wang Luo and Shang Xing were both second level Tao realm experts who were on the verge of breaking through to the third level of the Tao realm. The rest, including Qian Ming, were still at the first level of the Tao realm. New Tao realm experts emerged from the desolate ancient zone. Many searched for treasures and opportunities, while others from forces with grudges with Chu Zan's disciples began to chase them down again. This was especially true for Chu Pingfan. Many experts seemed to have a bone to pick with the extreme Tao, likely due to Kingslayer. Thanks to the Crystal Jade Palace, Feng Kong had reached the sixth level of the Tao realm, and now seemed to exude a celestial aura. Chu Zan observed what was going on in the Nine Zones, and how his disciples were faring. On the whole, everything was still within his control. Many geniuses were also popping up among the various races of the Nine Zones, though Ji Dexon was still at the forefront. Qin Qian was still in a state of deep sleep. As she slept, her cultivation continued to increase. She had now reached the first level of the Tao realm, and her fox soul had seven tails. A huge blood flower appeared in the ocean, which devoured all life within thousands of miles around it. It emitted a special aura that lured living beings over to be devoured. Even a Tao realm expert had fallen prey to it. The blood flower itself was a supreme treasure, and also a seventh level Tao realm existence. Xu Zan's eyes looked strange. He thought back to what he had seen before. There had been many blood flowers in the ocean back then, but almost all of them had disappeared, leaving only this one. Perhaps they had all fused together to form this huge blood flower. Chu Zan could sense that the blood flower wanted to steal fate, especially the fate of some heavens blessed, and even Tao realm experts. By doing so, it would be able to connect itself to the laws of heaven and earth. It wanted to become a part of the laws of heaven and earth, and control a part of it. Chu Zan laughed. Someone seemed to want to use the blood flower as a medium to obtain a part of the power of the laws of heaven and earth and use it to allow their clone to enter the nine zones. Unfortunately, most of the laws of heaven and earth had been devoured by the heavenly Tao laws, so that person's plan was destined for failure. Of course, the heavenly Tao laws had yet to extend to the ocean area where the blood flower was. In any case, given the current strength of the laws of heaven and earth in the nine zones, the blood flower would not be able to do anything even if it successfully infiltrated the laws of heaven and earth. Chu Zan decided that when Kingslayer entered the calamity, he would get this self-styled disciple of his to cut down the blood flower. Even though it was harmless, it was still disgusting. Chapter 405. Schemes Everywhere. The spirit devouring flower was very interested in the blood flower, but Chu Zan restrained it. If the heavenly Tao divine tree revealed itself, the heavenly Tao talisman plan might be exposed. Chu Zan observed the situation in the nine zones and spotted traces of schemes by various hidden experts everywhere. Even the human race had quite a few of them. Chu Zan was wondering whether the genius who created the human race's cultivation technique would return during the great Tao calamity. Chu Zan was sure that he was not dead, how strong was that person now? Some of the later experts of the human race had disappeared one after another. Was it related to this person? Chu Zan's intuition told him that the human race's experts from back then were planning something. They were ostracized from the ancient chaos world. Would the experts of the human race be willing to accept this? Chu Zan did not think so. He then turned his attention to Feng Kong, who had been cultivating the celestial race cultivation technique recorded in the Jade Crystal Palace. As a result, traces of the aura of that celestial race expert around him. If this aura accumulated, that Dao Yuan realm celestial race expert would be able to use Feng Kong's body as a medium to descend upon the Nine Zones and avoid the rejection of the Great Dao. After all, Feng Kong was a native of the Nine Zones. I'll find a chance to purify the aura around Feng Kong's body, but before that, I'll let that celestial race Dao Yuan expert train my follower. Xu Zan smiled. His other disciples would all eventually face the same problem as Feng Kong, given that most of the opportunities appearing in the Nine Zones now were part of schemes left behind by those beyond the Nine Zones. Chu Zan looked at Demon Buddha, whose demon race bloodline had undergone an atavism. After several clashes with the demon race Grand Elder, he had caught the attention of the hidden expert. However, atavism was not the same as a purified bloodline. Because Demon Buddha cultivated Buddhist Dharma, his ancient demon race bloodline was not awakened. However, when it was, then that hidden expert would likely descend with a wisp of his soul and use Demon Buddha to roam the Nine Zones. Chu Zan chuckled. Some guys are really good at scheming and playing chess. However, the only thing in store for you guys is shame and embarrassment. It was not that easy to take advantage of his disciples. While Chu Zan was preparing for his breakthrough, in a certain cave in the desolate ancient zone, a young man was sitting cross-legged, surrounded by strange lights. Wisps of Tao aura gathered around him and gradually integrated into his body. 
He was Yang Tian, the human race's most recent rising talent. He had killed many enemies and obtained great fate amidst the calamity. His strength had soared rapidly and he had broken through to the Dao realm. After he broke through, he killed a Dao realm blood fiend. People were calling him the second coming of Ji Dexin. He had even overshadowed Ding Yu, Xiao Liang, and the other human geniuses. It was rumored that he was of humble birth, similar to Qian Ming, and his origins were a mystery. Yang Tian opened his eyes and moved his body around, trying to familiarize himself with his new body. His aura fluctuated as he broke through without stopping and without any bottlenecks. Within a short period of time, he had broken through to the seventh level of the Dao realm. He walked out of the cave, looked up at the sky of the Nine Zones, and muttered to himself, Nine Zones, I've returned. Desolate Ancient Zone. The Nine Zones have not recovered to their peak state yet. Hey, although the Three Races' plan failed, it still caused immense damage to the Nine Zones. How many of the myriad races of the Nine Zones are left now? Yang Tian walked through the desolate ancient zone, heading toward the primordial land. He raised his head and looked at the sky. I wonder what changes the primordial land has undergone. Yang Tian kept moving forward. He seemed to be very familiar with the desolate ancient zone and the primordial land. Chapter 406. Chaotic purple light he stood outside the primordial land and looked into the distance with a strange expression on his face. After a long while, he muttered, there haven't been too many changes, but the human race has become stronger. Yang Tian turned around and left. Back in the cave, the light in Yang Tian's eyes began to dim, and the original Yang Tian regained control of his body. Kid, your cultivation level is decent, but your cultivation foundation isn't strong enough. Work hard and you won't have any bottlenecks before the seventh level. A voice rang out in his soul, you're really my ancestor? Yang Tian asked curiously, since he had such a powerful ancestor, why was he born with such a lowly background? It's been a long time. A very long time. Then, the voice fell silent, as if it had never been there in the first place. Yang Tian left the cave and headed to the treasure lands to seek out opportunities to strengthen his cultivation foundation. After he had regained control of his body, his cultivation level fell back down to the first level of the Dao realm. Chu Zan did not realize that someone from the outside had entered the nine zones through Yang Tian. He was waiting for the arrival of the 60-year milestone and the corresponding breakthrough to the Dao Yuan realm. Finally, the 60-year milestone arrived. You've been living in seclusion for 60 years and have not left the courtyard. You implemented the Heavenly Dao Talisman Plan that accelerated the progress of the Great Dao Yuan Calamity, nurtured talented disciples, and set a new record. You have been rewarded with a wisp of chaotic purple light. Chu Zan was startled. He could not help but think of the purple light that split the chaos when it was born. Hiss. It was an absolute treasure. Even a wisp of it was terrifying. Chu Zan was overjoyed. The chaotic purple light could split the chaos apart, so it was naturally very suitable to open one's Dao path. It was a true path-opening treasure. Chu Zan took a deep breath and examined the system's reward. Chaotic purple light, the first light to split the chaos, can also split the great Dao and overcome the chaotic calamity. It was powerful. Chu Zan immediately prepared to use the chaotic purple light to break through to the Dao Yuan realm and open his Dao path. He received the chaotic purple light. A ray of purple light appeared and instantly entered his body. Many Dao principles were intertwined with the purple light. Chu Zan started to break through. In order to prevent any disturbances, Chu Zan specifically told Su Shenner not to disturb him. With a wave of his hand, he set up layers of protection around him, which concealed his presence and aura. The Dao Yuan realm was about opening the Dao path. How would one open their Dao path? Naturally, it was by using the Great Dao as the basis to open up a Dao path of their own. Most Dao Yuan realm experts opened up their Dao path based on the Dao principle they had the greatest comprehension of. Every other Dao principle they had merely supplemented and strengthened their main Dao principle. Only extremely special Dao Yuan realm experts would open up more than a single Dao path. However no matter what or how many Dao principles one used, they were still rooted in the Great Dao. People had tried to open their Dao paths in the chaos back then, but had failed due to the difficulty and instability of doing so. The Dao path would collapse the moment the chaos fluctuated. Furthermore, it did not provide a comparable boost to one's strength. It was precisely because of this that no one chose to open their Dao path in the chaos. Unless of course one had a supreme treasure that could stabilize and continuously open up the Dao path in the chaos. However, not only were such supreme treasures far too rare, even if one succeeded, in the early and middle stages, one would be far weaker than those who opened up their Dao path based on the Great Dao. Chu Zan had the chaotic purple light, so the drawbacks of opening up a Dao path in the chaos did not exist for him. Moreover, he was not just opening up a normal Dao path, but a miniature version of the Great Dao. However, he would not leave the Nine Zones to head to the chaos, it was too dangerous. He still wanted to continue his record of staying at home. Moreover, his goal was for the Heavenly Dao Laws to devour the Great Dao. Therefore, he would also use the Nine Zones Great Dao as the foundation to open his Dao path. A wisp of purple light appeared, and Chu Zan's aura gradually strengthened and transformed. 
Indistinctly, the invisible Great Tao seemed to be manifested under Chu Zan's feet. Under the guidance of the purple light, all of his Tao principles fused into a miniature Great Tao. Chu Zan did not merge the reincarnation Great Tao principle, Ghost Great Tao principle, or the Buddhist Great Tao principle with his other Tao principles. These were independent existences, and would become one of his trump cards. The purple light spread and connected to the Great Tao. As the purple light moved forward, a miniature Great Tao that seemed to be a copy of the Great Tao started to spread and open up. Chu Zan's aura was constantly strengthening and transforming. The power of his Tao principles was transformed into the power of a Great Tao. As the Great Tao was opened, it continued to extend, expand, and stabilize, turning from invisible to tangible, as if a road had been paved on the Great Tao. However, this Tao path was still not strong enough. In the blink of an eye, the Tao path grew to 10 miles long and 1 mile wide. The purple light continued to spread and lay the foundation for the Tao path. Waves of the Great Tao's aura also continuously poured into the Tao path Chu Zan had opened. Boom. It was now 30 miles long. Chu Zan felt some pressure. As the Tao path extended, it seemed to become weaker. It seemed that if he continued, it would become unstable. He did not know how far the other Dao Yuan realm experts would extend their Dao path when they first opened it, but Chu Zan naturally was not willing to accept this. The ancient Chaos Mountain appeared on the Dao path with a rumble. The Dao path, which had been somewhat unstable, instantly became stable. The chaotic purple light continued to spread and the Dao path continued to extend. Chu Zan had not used a single Dao principle to open his Dao path, but a miniature version of the Great Dao. This increased the difficulty of opening and stabilizing the Tao path. Still, such a Tao path would be undeniably stronger. Boom. A hundred miles long, ten miles wide, this length and width appeared to be a threshold, and his aura instantly became ten times stronger. The Tao path was still being opened, and the chaotic purple light was still extending it, but it had already dimmed a little. Chu Zan's cultivation foundation was getting deeper and deeper. Chu Zan thought back to how he bragged about opening a Tao path that was millions of miles long. Now he truly knew how difficult it was to accomplish such a feat. His current progress was only due to the chaotic purple light and the ancient chaos mountain. When they reached their limit, so would his Tao path. The chaotic purple light continued to spread and gradually dim. 200 miles, 300 miles, 500 miles, he was about to catch up to Kun He and Ruoxian. The chaotic purple light was already a shadow of its former self. Judging from the current situation, a thousand miles might be his current limit. Chapter 407 Opening the Tao Path, Part 1. Even a wisp of chaotic purple light was not enough to open a Tao Path that surpassed a thousand miles. It was no wonder Hong Yuanchu had only opened up a thousand mile Tao Path after two Tao Yuan. Without the help of a supreme treasure, one had to rely on one's own strength to open their Tao Path. In most cases, this was painstakingly slow. Moreover, their comprehension had to be able to keep up. Only with new insights and new understandings of the Great Tao could one continue to open the Tao Path. At the same time, they had to stabilize and consolidate their Tao path, which would take a long time. Back then, he had thought that Hong Yuanchu and the others were useless for achieving so little given the time they had. However, he now had a clear understanding. Even with two treasures in his system-assisted comprehension, he had not even extended his Tao path to a thousand miles yet. In this great Tao era, the events that led to the expulsion of the three races had resulted in a lack of path opening supreme treasures in the nine zones. Therefore, Hong Yuanchu and the others had to rely on their own strength to open their Tao paths. He had given each of them a small chaos stone, so they had likely made some progress by now. An axe appeared in Chu Zan's hand, heaven-splitting axe. This was a path-opening treasure. His Tao aura condensed into a figure on the great Tao that rushed forward with the heaven-splitting axe to help the chaotic purple light to extend the Tao path. It reduced the consumption rate of the chaotic purple light. Boom. His figure swung the axe repeatedly, consuming his Tao aura at a rapid pace. At this rate, he would be able to extend his Tao path to a thousand miles. However, as his Tao path grew longer, the edge of the Tao path began to weaken and grow unstable. Chu Zan frowned. Would he have to split the ancient Chaos Mountain in two? That would definitely weaken its suppressing and stabilizing power. Because he was opening his Tao path so quickly, the ancient Chaos Mountain's suppressing and stabilizing power could not reach the newly opened sections of the Tao path in time. Should I slow down? Chu Zan immediately dispelled this thought. If he slowed down, then he would not be able to reduce the consumption of the chaotic purple light. Then, he thought of something and a book appeared in his hand. The Earth Creation Scripture, he flipped open the book and waved it, boom. On the newly opened section of the Tao Path, a small realm appeared that was only 10 miles in radius. Chu Zan heaved a sigh of relief. He had been too worried that creating the realm on his Tao Path would crush it. In the end, he was able to stabilize his Tao Path. After thinking about it, he understood, the Earth Creation Scripture used the power of the Great Tao to form the realm. It was because of this that the realm would not crush his Tao path, but stabilize it instead. 
The earth creation scripture was undoubtedly a supreme treasure. Xu Zan waved his hands and continuously extended his Tao path. Whenever the newly opened sections of the Tao path became unstable, he would use the earth creation scripture to enlarge the initial realm he created. Still, Xu Zan did not plan to turn the realm into a world. Otherwise, wouldn't it be impossible to hide the Tao path he had opened? It was not a good thing to be discovered, he quietly continued his path opening efforts. The chaotic purple light was getting dimmer and dimmer, and Xu Zan's Tao aura was also rapidly running dry. There was no concept of time in clearing the way. Chu Zan did not know how long it had been since he had started breaking through. Other Daoyuan realm experts would take thousands of years to break through. However, Chu Zan felt that his breakthrough would end in a month. At the very least, it should be less than a year. After he reached the Daoyuan realm, he would probably receive another system reward, which filled him with anticipation. He was certain that he was the fastest and youngest to reach the Daoyuan realm. He would set two records. What kind of reward would the system give for that? The reward for the 60 year milestone was chaotic purple light. Then what about 70 years, or even a hundred years? Chu Zan's heart began to beat rapidly, he was getting ahead of himself. Chu Zan calmed the restlessness in his heart, he had to be steady and stable. Once the Nine Zones Great Tao was devoured by the Heavenly Tao Laws, he would no longer have to remain in the courtyard. He would be able to leave and show off. Boom! The heaven splitting axe swung mightily, and the dim chaotic purple light exploded in a final blaze of glory and disappeared. Chapter 408. Opening the Tao Path, Part 2, his 60-year milestone reward had been fully used up. After surpassing the 1,000-mile mark, Chu Zan felt his strength rise again. The next threshold was the 10,000-mile one, after which he would be qualified to leave the Nine Zones and head into the chaos. He had officially stepped into the ranks of the strong. Chu Zan continued trying to extend his Tao Path, though it was far slower than when he had the chaotic purple light's assistance. For those in the Tao Yuan realm, every meter of the Tao Path was significant. One had to rely on time, strengthening one's cultivation foundation, and comprehension of the Great Tao in order to continue. Any Tao Yuan realm expert would take countless years to accumulate their strength. Chu Zan continued to stabilize his Tao path. Chu Zan was confident that he had surpassed Hong Yuanchu and the others. Furthermore, this was just the beginning. Now that he had reached the Tao Yuan realm, the system rewards that followed would definitely assist in extending his Tao path further. Chu Zan activated the ancient Chaos Mountain and walked along his Tao path while continuing to consolidate it. This was a newly born miniature Great Tao. Furthermore, thanks to the presence of the ancient Chaos Mountain, which would continuously stabilize and strengthen it, his Tao path would only become more stable with time. Chu Zan was very confident in this regard. After all, no one else had such a treasure. When his Tao path solidified, it became as translucent as a piece of jade, laid upon the Great Tao itself. Chu Zan retrieved the ancient Chaos Mountain and concealed his Tao path. Unlike ordinary Tao paths, his was a miniature Great Tao which meant that it was extremely difficult to differentiate from the actual Great Tao. Furthermore, the heavenly Tao laws contained within it were derived from the laws of heaven and earth of the Nine Zones. After breaking through to the Tao Yuan realm, Chu Zan heaved a sigh of relief. In the Nine Zones, he was the strongest, despite the number of clones or avatars those who were beyond the Nine Zones sent in. By the time they managed to bypass the Great Tao of the Nine Zones' rejection and descend personally, Chu Zan believed that he would be strong enough to deal with them. Moreover, the Nine Zones would be incorporated into the Heavenly Tao Laws by then, so he would be in a position of absolute advantage. At that point, there was no need to fear no matter how many of them came. Chu Zan awoke from his breakthrough and found that two months had passed. This breakthrough had taken longer than he expected. In two months, he had opened a thousand-mile Tao path, which was enough to incite jealousy and envy among other Tao Yuan realm experts. You broke through to the Tao Yuan realm and became the fastest living being to open their Tao path in history you have been rewarded with the Three Birth Reincarnation Bridge and a thousand miles of Tao Path. You've broken through to the Tao Yuan realm and become the youngest Tao Yuan realm living being in history. You have been rewarded with the unity of the Heavenly Tao and a thousand miles of Tao Path. The expected system rewards arrived. Chu Zan was overjoyed. The reward was very generous. He examined his reward. The Three Birth Reincarnation Bridge allowed living beings to be reincarnated. It would automatically erase their memories and traces of their previous lives, turning them into new living beings. This was the supreme treasure that he had been lacking in order to establish the reincarnation cycle. His reincarnation Great Tao had also completed its transformation when he broke through to the Tao Yuan realm. He was now ready to implement the reincarnation cycle, which would lay a solid foundation for the Heavenly Tao to devour the Great Tao. He looked at the other reward. The unity of the Heavenly Tao will incorporate the nine zones into the Heavenly Tao laws, except for the desolate ancient zone. Chu Zan was extremely surprised by this reward. The current expansion rate of the Heavenly Tao laws was progressing smoothly, but it would still take a long time before it incorporated the Nine Zones. However, the system's reward was exactly that. That being said, why was the desolate ancient zone excluded? After thinking about it, Chu Zan vaguely understood. 
The desolate ancient zone was the core of the nine zones, and the place closest to the great Tao. Furthermore, it was not restricted by the laws of heaven and earth. Chapter 409. Opening the Tao Path, Part 3. The laws of heaven and earth did not exist in the desolate ancient zone, and it was because of this that the zone was excluded from the reward. Once the heavenly Tao laws expanded into this zone, it meant that the heavenly Tao laws would encounter the laws of the great Tao. If the heavenly Tao laws wanted to devour the great Tao, the desolate ancient zone was the starting point. The heavenly domain above the primordial land was not within the jurisdiction of the laws of heaven and earth. There, only the laws of the great Tao existed. The ones who had opened their Tao paths were above the laws of heaven and earth, and were no longer restricted by them. In truth, Tao realm cultivators were no longer restricted by those laws either. Breaking through to the Tao realm was an act of transcending the laws of heaven and earth. Chu Zan was satisfied. The nine zones now truly belonged to him, albeit with one caveat, which was the desolate ancient zone. However, the great Tao Yuan calamity was ongoing, and the great Tao calamity was approaching, so he still decided to conceal the heavenly Tao laws. During the great Tao Yuan calamity, the laws of heaven and earth were dormant, and would only resume operation after the calamity. That being said, although Tao realm experts transcended the laws of heaven and earth, they could not transcend the heavenly Tao laws. The two were not the same. In addition to those rewards, he was also rewarded with 2,000 miles of Tao path. His Tao path was now 3,000 miles long, making him the number one expert in the nine zones. Chu Zan received his first reward, the three birth reincarnation bridge and put it away to be used later. Next, he received the 2,000 mile Tao path rewards. Boom. His Tao path instantly began to expand and extend. It became 3,000 miles long and 300 miles wide. Furthermore, there were no traces of instability. The system was truly awesome. Then, he received the final reward. In an instant, Chu Zan felt the changes. The heavenly Tao talisman had transformed. The entire nine zones seemed to be under his control, and he could destroy all life with a single thought. A single thought could create life. This was what it felt like to be the ruler of the heavenly Tao laws, which now presided over the nine zones. Well, almost all of it anyway. Everything in the nine zones became apparent to Chu Zan. No matter what kind of opportunities, treasure lands, or schemes there were, none of them could escape his eyes. In the northern region of the western zone, the aura of blood and evil pervaded the land. There was a pitch black ancient battlefield there. It was a precious treasure left by the ancient demons, and their method of infiltrating the nine zones. Chu Zan saw the stone house and the strange tree. He saw countless blood fiends. These blood fiends were actually already displaying traces of demonic power. They were transforming into demons. It seemed that the other party actually wanted to use the blood fiend race as a foundation to create a new demon race. It was a good plan. The blood fiend race were calamity bearers. If they obtained great fate amidst the calamity and were gradually transformed into demons, it would weaken the great Tao's rejection toward the ancient demon race. Chu Zan noticed a wisp of a divine soul somewhere in the stone house controlling everything. He hesitated as to whether or not to cut it off. For that person to be able to extend their divine soul, even just a wisp of it, in such a way without triggering the rejection of the great Tao, meant that this hidden expert was definitely very powerful. Chu Zan pondered for a moment and decided not to alert the enemy. Chapter 410 Changes in the Nine Zones, Part 1 After the Nine Zones were incorporated into the Heavenly Tao Laws, Chu Zan saw many secrets and hidden things. After the incorporation of the Nine Zones into the Heavenly Tao Laws, the Nine Zones, which had been slowly expanding due to the additional ancient battlefields and treasure lands, suddenly expanded to their original size immediately. Compared to the Nine Zones just after the last Great Tao Calamity, the current Nine Zones were a hundred times larger. This sudden turn of events caught everyone off guard. No one knew what happened. The recovery of the nine zones should have been a gradual and slow process. How did it suddenly recover completely? Moreover, why did it feel like something was wrong? Were there changes in the Great Tao again? Was it due to the number of interfering parties? Some of the hidden experts could not sit still and contacted each other, complaining that the other party was too radical, which led to this drastic change. They felt that the situation in the nine zones was going out of control. Still, the Great Tao had not changed, they faced no additional hindrances or rejection from the Great Tao. Since this was the case, something else must have happened to cause this change. Keep calm. It was a good thing that the nine zones had recovered in advance. They just had to adjust their plans, in a secret place in the desolate ancient zone. Yang Tian lost control of his body again, and his ancestor made his appearance again. In this regard, Yang Tian was helpless and had no way to resist. In any case, his opportunity and rise to power were all thanks to this ancestor. Although he knew that he was a chess piece, it was also an opportunity for him. Moreover, the other party was his ancestor. Although he did not know how many generations they were separated by, his ancestor would not harm him, right? Yang Tian raised his head and looked at the sky, frowning. Strange, why do I feel that something is not right? 
since the great Daoyuan calamity was ongoing, it was to be expected that the laws of heaven and earth would remain dormant. In fact, now was the best time to change the laws of heaven and earth and add new laws, which was what the three races had done back then in order to introduce the law of heavenly punishment. They were met with resistance by the great Dao, but the Daoyuan experts of the three races worked together to overcome it. However, it was still not easy to achieve. If one was not careful, it would cause chaos and one would be devoured by the great Dao. If one wanted to change the laws of heaven and earth, one had to first understand the laws perfectly. Yang Tian, frowned. Could it be that there was a strong cultivator who wanted to change the laws of heaven and earth? The human race's Daoyuan realm experts? Were they dumb? With their level of strength and lack of understanding of the laws of heaven and earth, coupled with the fact that they did not have a supreme treasure to protect them, how could they possibly succeed? On second thought, this line of thinking did not seem right. Although the laws of heaven and earth were dormant, they were not undetectable. However, the laws of heaven and earth of the nine zones seemed to have disappeared. There was only one possibility for that to happen. The great Dao calamity was coming. Yang Tian, gasped. How was that possible? How many years had it even been since the great Dao Yuan calamity started? Not even a hundred years. How could the great Dao calamity be coming? However, there was no other possible explanation. As for the laws being devoured, the thought never crossed his mind. How could the laws of heaven and earth be devoured? In the long history of the nine zones, there had been no lack of ambitious people. Even the three powerful races could only control part of the laws of heaven and earth. The laws of heaven and earth could not be devoured. Back then, the nine zones had been extremely powerful and there were countless experts. How many experts were there in the nine zones now? Moreover, compared to the strong ones back then, the current experts in the nine zones were all considered weak. He felt that something was not right with the nine zones and frowned, his original plan had to change. He had wasted so much time and time making so many arrangements, yet a curveball had rendered it all useless. Fortunately, he was not the only one. The others were also caught off guard, which meant that he had not fallen behind. It was time to prepare for the Great Dao Calamity. The last Great Dao Calamity had been extremely terrifying, and had resulted in the three races being expunged from the nine zones. What would the Great Dao Calamity be like this time? It was rumored that the ominous aura of the Great Dao Calamity had already appeared, and no one knew what would happen. The source of their Dao paths was still the Great Dao. Once they were contaminated with the ominous aura, it would be very troublesome. Boy, work hard to fight for opportunities. I'm afraid that a big change is coming. Now that all of the treasure lands in the nine zones have appeared, let's act quickly. After giving some instructions to Yang Tian, he disappeared. Chapter 411 Changes in the Nine Zones, Part 2 Yang Tian regained control of his body and continued on his treasure hunting journey. Chu Zan's eyes were fixed on Yang Tian. Of course, he could easily destroy him. However, there was no need to. It was faster than he had expected. There were already experts who had descended and taken over physical bodies. Was it because they had sensed some changes in the Nine Zones? Chu Zan looked at the other Heavens Blessed. Yang Tian was the first person to be possessed by a powerful cultivator. That wisp of aura should belong to an ancient human expert. The aura around Feng Kong's body also became a little thicker. The celestial race saint probably also wanted to descend at some point. Including Ding Yu and a few others, most of the heavens blessed were all contaminated by various auras. This was related to the number of opportunities and treasures they had obtained. Many of these things were schemes of those people beyond the nine zones. Currently, Ding Yu and Chu Zan's other disciples had officially entered a phase of explosive growth. Their strength was rapidly increasing. Furthermore, they all had the Heavenly Dao seal. Now that the Heavenly Dao laws had unified the Nine Zones, excluding the desolate ancient zone, even if Chu Zan did not interfere, their fate would continue to soar. The chances of obtaining opportunities would be greater. In turn, it would strengthen the Heavenly Dao laws. After the Heavenly Dao laws had taken over the Nine Zones, it had been in the process of strengthening. Chu Zan looked at Hu Tianya. He was a bit special. Due to the transformation of his bloodline into the White Tiger Divine Beast, most auras were unable to attach themselves to him. After all, the might of a divine beast was too strong. However, if the ancient experts of the monster race were the ones intervening, Hu Tianya would not be able to avoid it either. Chu Zan finally turned to Hei Yu. Her innate divine soul was extremely special. Was she the reincarnation of some expert? Was she here to target the Great Dao as well? Now that Chu Zan had reached the Dao Yuan realm, he could explore deeper. His eyes flickered. A moment later, Chu Zan was slightly surprised. Hei Yu was not the reincarnation of an expert, much less a split soul of an ancient expert. She was really born with a divine soul. However, during the process of the soul derivation, there was an accident, which resulted in a defect in the divine soul. Since she was not the reincarnation of an expert, Chu Zan was relieved. He did not want to be tricked by some old man. He looked at where Qin Qian was. She was still in a state of deep sleep, and was now a third-level Dao realm cultivator. 
The fox teased Chu Zan and shook his head, no longer paying attention. As long as she did not lose herself, he would let her be. No matter whose plan it was, it was good. Now that the nine zones belonged to him, no matter how much planning and scheming there was, it could not escape his grasp. The heavenly Dao laws continued to spread, seeping into the desolate ancient zone. Chu Zan's attention suddenly turned to Fengkong. The jade crystal palace in Fengkong's body fluctuated slightly, emitting an ancient aura. That celestial race saint seemed about ready to enter Fengkong's body. He had probably sensed the changes in the nine zones and wanted to descend to check things out in order to formulate a better plan. Fengkong had already reached the seventh level of the Dao realm. Of course, his cultivation was in part due to the Jade Crystal Palace. At this moment, Feng Kong's brows were slightly furrowed, he had noticed something unusual. There were some problems with the Jade Crystal Palace. Chu Zan had warned him before. As his cultivation level increased, and his mastery of the cultivation technique deepened, he gradually discovered some clues. His body seemed to have been contaminated by some kind of aura. It seemed to be the aura of inheritance, however, he felt that something was different. Today, while he was cultivating, he suddenly noticed the aura fluctuate. He activated his Tao principles immediately to suppress it. Suddenly, the Jade Crystal Palace trembled. The treasure, which had saved his life, had actually moved on its own. This was not a good thing. No one wanted to be controlled by others, and no one wanted to become a puppet. He was willing to become Chu Zan's follower, but not his puppet. Even this was due to wanting to repay Chu Zan for saving him. At this moment, Feng Kong's expression changed. No matter how hard he tried, he could not suppress the trembling Jade Crystal Palace and the wisp of inexplicable aura. I must find the Lord to resolve this problem. Feng Kong suddenly stood up, and a voice suddenly rang out in his mind. You're my disciple, so don't resist. I'm only borrowing your body to take a look at the nine zones, it'll be good for you. Who are you? Feng Kong's expression changed drastically. Temporarily borrowing his body? If the other party borrowed his body and left behind his aura, he would be unable to escape the other party's grasp in the future. He could be possessed by the other party at any time and even be turned into a clone. Feng Kong was not inexperienced, he was well aware of the danger involved. The other party clearly had some sort of scheme in place. How could borrowing a physical body be as useful as transforming the body into a clone? He had only received some of this person's inheritance and could not be considered a disciple. Furthermore, there was no shortage of masters who would sacrifice their disciples at the drop of a hat. The fluctuations of that wisp of aura began to become a little stronger. The other party had yet to arrive, so he could not wait any longer, he had to seek out the Lord to resolve this matter. Feng Kong was about to leave when Chu Zan's voice was transmitted into his mind. Don't panic. My lord, I know, he's going to give you an opportunity, just accept it. My lord, who is this person? Someone from the celestial race. After he gives you enough opportunities, I'll make his efforts go to waste, Chu Zan said lightly. Feng Kong heaved a sigh of relief. At the same time, he was a little confused. What opportunity would the other party give? Chu Zan was waiting. He also wanted to know if the other party was Taoist Flying Cloud, though it was most likely not. By extracting a wisp of the other party's aura and establishing a connection with it, he could probe their intentions. As for whether that person would resent him for doing so, Chu Zan was not afraid at all. The other party could not enter the Nine Zones. No matter how many avatars he sent, they would be limited to the Tao realm. Who? A ray of light suddenly appeared in the Jade Crystal Palace, and then a faint trace of wool began to seep into it. Chu Zan exclaimed. The other party was going all in. He did not want to wait any longer and wanted to turn the Funkon into a clone. That ray of light was a treasure. In order to lay out his plan in the nine zones, he had gone to great pains. When the other party's trace of will appeared, Chu Zan made his move. He instantly cut off the other party's will transmission. At the same time, he extracted its aura and moved it into the origin Dao crystal, establishing a connection between them. Who is obstructing me? A weak voice came from the Jade Crystal Palace and then disappeared. After a while, the other party seemed to want to descend again, and this time the Jade Crystal Palace trembled very intensely. It was obvious that he was angry. Chu Zan chuckled and completely wiped out the aura of the other party from the Jade Crystal Palace and Feng Kong. Now, the Jade Crystal Palace completely belonged to Feng Kong. Chu Zan took a look at the ray of light in the Jade Crystal Palace and confirmed that it was indeed a treasure. However, it was not one that would assist in opening a Dao path, so he paid no heed to it. In any case, he had countless similar treasures of this level on hand. Everything's fine now. The Jade Crystal Palace is yours from now on. It's an opportunity given by the other party. Take advantage of it. Many thanks, my lord. Feng Kong was extremely excited. He had indeed made the right choice in becoming Chu Zan's follower back then. The lord was indeed extremely powerful. Also, Kingslayer is about to enter a calamity. I won't interfere in the feud between you and him. Chu Zan reminded him. In fact, the key to this grudge was Feng Kong. With Kingslayer's current cultivation level and his arrogant personality, he would not be interested in Feng Kong, who was weaker than he was. 
he was even less interested in the people he had once defeated. Unless Feng Kong caught up, however, it was very difficult. Even if Feng Kong obtained a supreme treasure, it would be difficult to catch up with an extreme Dao cultivator. Thank you for your reminder, my lord. Feng Kong will resolve it, Feng Kong said respectfully. Very well, Chu Zan responded before disappearing. Chapter 412 Ancient Chaos World In the chaos, there was a vast land that had experienced many vicissitudes. This place was constantly in a state of hazy light, that was neither dark nor bright. The Ancient Chaos World There were many experts in the Ancient Chaos World. Even the weakest living being here had reached the heaven realm. Moreover, those were all newborn living beings. Once they grew older, they would naturally reach the divine realm. Somewhere in the ancient chaos world, there was a huge mountain. The mountain peak was lush with plants and flowers. There was a small bridge and a clear stream there. It was like a paradise. Bright light shone on the mountain, forming a sharp contrast with the dim light of the ancient chaos world. Any place with light was a place with true experts. These were holy lands in the ancient chaos world and places that countless lower class living beings yearned for. This mountain peak was called Mount Yuan. It was a well known holy land in the ancient chaos world. Mount Yuan was the Taoist temple of the celestial race's saint, Yuan Shan. At this moment, in a palace on the mountain peak, Yuan Shan suddenly opened his eyes. He had white hair and a ruddy complexion. However, unlike his usual sage like self, he was filled with killing intent at this moment. Who obstructed me? He moved and left Mount Yuan in an instant heading toward somewhere else in the ancient chaos world. There was also a huge mountain here, but it was different from Mount Yuan. This mountain was filled with a devilish aura, and exuded a brutal feeling. Those who did not have strong willpower would lose their minds and go berserk once they stepped too close to the mountain. Yuan Shan's figure instantly appeared outside Demon Mountain as he roared, Tian Mo Lai, get out here. What do you want? A burly figure appeared in front of Yuan Shan. His aura was not weak at all. Tell me, did you stop me from entering the Nine Zones? Yuan Shan raged. Tian Mo Lai was surprised. Yuan Shan's descent was obstructed? He was secretly happy. I, Tian Mo Lai, would never resort to such underhanded methods, he said with a cold smile, I'm not as hypocritical as you, old Yuan. This matter has nothing to do with me, you really didn't do it. If I said no, then it means no do you want to fight? Tian Mo Lai was not afraid at all. I hope it's not you, otherwise, humph. Yuan Shan left. Tian Mo Lai furrowed his brows. What was going on? What or who obstructed Yuan Shan's descent into the Nine Zones? From his behavior, it was obvious that he was not rejected by the Great Tao, but that someone had intervened. However, there should not be such an expert capable of intervening in the Nine Zones. Although there were Tao Yuan realm cultivators in the Nine Zones, they would not have been able to discover Yuan Shan's scheme. Of course, he could not rule out the possibility that it was a self-directed ploy by Yuan Shan. That guy was a hypocrite, after all. Tian Mo Lai sneered and returned to his mountain. Yuan Shan returned to Mount Yuan with a dark expression on his face. He could vaguely feel that a wisp of his aura seemed to have been connected to something. He tried to contact it, but it was like throwing a stone into the ocean. There was no response. After Chu Zan resolved Feng Kong's hidden worries, he was originally prepared to contact Yuan Shan. However, he thought that if he contacted him, Taoist Flying Cloud might suspect him. He did not want to be targeted, nor did he want them to be prepared. In his conversation with Taoist Flying Cloud, Chu Zan had told him that he had left the Nine Zones. Moreover, the transformation of the origin Dao crystal had entered its final stages. The originally rhombus-shaped crystal had already started melting. Chu Zan had been observing the process as it happened. Luckily, the Great Dao Communication Group and the Dao Yuan group chat were unaffected. After melting, the origin Dao crystal gradually turned into liquid that also seemed to contain Dao principles. The transformation continued. At this moment, Chu Zan sensed the existence of laws from the origin Dao crystal. The crystal state of the origin Dao crystal did not contain any laws. The fact that it had developed laws meant that it had grown. More and more laws appeared. Chu Zan's brows suddenly twitched. He was very familiar with these laws. It was no different from the laws of the Great Tao. Were they a carbon copy? The origin Tao crystal could give birth to a Great Tao. When it was in its crystal state, it could be considered an egg. Now, it was about to hatch. Then, a nascent Great Tao would be born. As it grew, it would grow into a Great Tao that was not weaker than the Great Tao of the Nine Zones. Of course, that would take a long time. The transformation of the origin Dao crystal would take some time, but Chu Zan kept watching anyway. Now that the nine zones had been taken over by the heavenly Dao laws, he could focus his attention elsewhere. The sudden appearance of so many treasure lands and ancient battlefields intensified the fighting and competition in the nine zones. Thanks to this, many people who were originally unable to participate in the competition had the opportunity to obtain treasures and opportunities. Ding Yu and the other disciples continued their state of explosive growth. This was partly due to the blessing of the heavenly Dao but there were also certain people who kept giving out opportunities and treasures to improve their cultivation. 
They must have sensed that something was not quite right with the nine zones and wanted to speed up their plans. Chu Zan was happy to let these guys nurture his disciples. In the end, their efforts would be for naught. Chapter 413 Mystery of the Extreme Dao The final harvest would still be his. The origin Dao crystal kept producing laws as if it was really copying the great Dao of the nine zones. Perhaps that was why it was not rejected and devoured by the great Dao. In fact, it seemed very compatible with the great Dao and was even connected to it. The great Dao did not seem to mind the origin Dao crystal using its Dao aura to nurture and grow itself and its laws. Based on the current state, the laws that were born after the transformation of the origin Dao crystal were a copy of the laws of the great Dao. Under normal circumstances, once the origin Dao crystal started copying the laws of the great Dao, it would be rejected. However, the current situation was not like that. Chu Zan fell into a state of deep thought. The origin Dao crystal had always been connected to the great Dao and was nurtured by the Dao aura of the great Dao. In other words, it was the great Dao that hatched the origin Dao crystal. Perhaps that was why it had been acknowledged by the great Dao. Its current state was like the process of a chick breaking out of its shell. Kingslayer was about to enter the calamity. In the desolate ancient zone, there were experts above the 10th level of the Dao realm who had entered the nine zones. There were even 12th level Dao realm experts. Chu Zan did not stop him. The nine zones were now under his control anyway, and the heavenly Dao laws were also seeping into the desolate ancient zone. That being said, its progress was very slow and it was rather difficult. Chu Zan sent something to Kingslayer and asked him to set it up in his cave abode. He did not say what it was used for, and Kingslayer did not ask, he just followed the instructions. Chu Zan was quite satisfied with this in name disciple of his. That treasure was a catalyst to draw in the heavenly Dao laws, which would speed up the infiltration of the heavenly Dao laws and hide its traces. Dao Yuan realm cultivators might be able to discover some clues from it, but Chu Zan did not mind. He could always create some sort of excuse, which would most likely be related to the great Dao calamity. Kingslayer cultivated the extreme Dao of slaughter. Once he entered the calamity, a lot of people were going to be out of luck. Anyone who targeted Chu Pingfan would be in trouble. As an extreme Dao cultivator himself, Kingslayer would not let this slide. Targeting extreme Dao cultivators was akin to targeting him as well. Kill. Chu Pingfan was already in the second level of the Dao realm, but he was still facing precarious situations. He was finding it difficult to find opportunities to fight for fate. Chu Zan was also curious. Why were extreme Dao cultivators so special and always targeted? There had to be a reason. Those guys who were targeting Chu Pingfan probably did not know the specific reason either, but they were simply drawn to targeting him. On an island in the ocean region of the southern zone, three men were gathered together. One of them said coldly, he should be nearby. He can't escape. Extreme Dao cultivators must die. These three were not human Dao realm cultivators, but experts from other races. Chu Pingfan's difficult situation was because there was no lack of experts from the human race who were against him. Similarly, there was no lack of experts from the other races who were against him as well. When the other young human geniuses were bullied by foreign experts, there would be human experts who would step up to defend them. However, no one would do so for Chu Pingfan, he was determined that he would kill all of these B** stars when his strength increased. Just as the three Dao realm experts were discussing how to find Chu Pingfan, a figure appeared behind them soundlessly. It was a man with unkempt hair and an untidy appearance. At this moment, there was a strange look in his eyes. Did the human race have another extreme Dao cultivator? How long had it been since there was a trace of the extreme Dao in the Nine Zones? Before Kingslayer, there had been no trace of the extreme Dao in the Nine Zones for a long time. Before he started cultivating the extreme Dao, he vaguely knew that extreme Dao cultivators would be constantly targeted. As for the reason for that, he was not too sure. During Kingslayer's time, the human race had intense battles with the demon race, the monster race, and many other foreign races. In the early stages, he had killed many foreign races and made great contributions to the human race. Because of this, even after his identity as an extreme Dao cultivator was exposed, he was not targeted by the human race. Instead, he was protected by the human race's experts. This gave Kingslayer the chance to rise. After he rose to power, would he care if he was targeted? Those who targeted him were all killed. He then thought of Feng Kong, who was around the same age as he was. He was also a peerless genius of the human race, and it was rumored that he was the descendant of an ancient human king's family. He rose to power, suppressed the other races, and advanced triumphantly. Countless experts protected him and fought for him. In the end, he ascended to the throne of the human king and surpassed Kingslayer. When Kingslayer broke through to the Dao realm and killed some of the experts who had once targeted him, he was ostracized. Later, in order to improve further, he killed the demon king and challenged Feng Kong, he accidentally killed him. In fact, Kingslayer had not wanted to kill Feng Kong. After all, he was a human king, and the latter had never targeted him. Back then, he did not really kill for the sake of killing and had not deviated from his path. Although there were signs of deviation, it had not manifested fully at that point. However, Feng Kong had gone all out. Since Kingslayer cultivated the extreme Dao of slaughter, 
The more he fought, the fiercer he became, and the more he fought, the crazier he became. In the end, he killed Feng Kong. Once Feng Kong died, the extreme Dao was declared taboo. Back then, countless human experts had pursued him. Among them were many Dao realm experts who had not gone to the desolate ancient zone yet. During this process, he became fiercer and stronger, he quickly reached the second level of the Dao realm. Because of this, Kingslayer's path deviated. He killed for the sake of killing and indulged in the pleasure of increasing his cultivation level in this way. He killed so many human experts and wiped out so many forces that they were terrified and no longer dared to pursue him. The reason why some of the ancient Foss's Dao realm experts were half crippled was because they had been severely injured by Kingslayer. In the end, Kingslayer did not fully lose himself. When he noticed that he had killed so many of the human race's experts, to the point that they were weaker in comparison to the other races, he changed targets. After all, he had fought for the human race and was once seen as a hero. Therefore, he charged into the monster zone and killed a large number of monster race Dao realm experts. A portion of them fled to the desolate ancient zone in fear. After that, Kingslayer killed his way into the demon zone and killed the experts there, preventing them from rising up and suppressing the human race. Kingslayer indulged in the joy of killing and the joy of his cultivation level rapidly increasing. There were no more experts in the nine zones, so he went to the primordial land and killed people everywhere. He became a crazy murderer, causing countless Dao realm experts to be afraid. Were it not for Chu Zan's reminder, he would probably have fallen deeper and deeper into the abyss. In the end, his Dao principles would have collapsed and he would have gone crazy. Kingslayer thought about these past events and sighed inwardly. Without the guidance of a great teacher, it was easy to go astray. Extreme Dao cultivators were rare, and their inheritances were almost non-existent. He had only embarked on the path of cultivating the extreme Dao by chance. Without anyone to guide him, he had to rely on himself and, as a result, he had gone astray. Fortunately, he had met his master, Kingslayer rejoiced in his heart. As for being shameless, as long as he could become stronger, what dignity did he need? Feng Kong, that fellow, actually came back to life. This was really strange. Still, a defeated opponent was not worth his time. Chapter 414 Crazy Killer, Part 1 After the three Dao realm experts finished their discussion, they were about to split up and search for Chu Pingfan's hiding spot when they suddenly froze. A faint killing intent lingered in the surroundings. There was an expert. You three are looking for an extreme Dao cultivator? The three Dao realm experts looked back and were shocked. When did this person appear behind them? When they saw that the other party was a human expert, they felt uneasy. Was he going to stand up for that human youth? That should not be possible, right? No one had stood up for him so far. Feeling a little relieved, they hurriedly bowed. Human senior, we are indeed looking for an extreme Dao cultivator. Extreme Dao cultivators are not allowed to exist in the nine zones. Kingslayer's eyes were indifferent. Extreme Dao cultivators were not allowed to exist in the nine zones? Since that's the case, come and kill me. What? The three Dao realm experts were shocked. I'm also an extreme Dao cultivator. Boom. The three Dao realm experts' faces turned white and their heads buzzed. Extreme Dao cultivator? Senior, don't joke around. Cold sweat ran down their foreheads. Why is there another extreme Dao cultivator? Was that young man not supposed to be the only one? Was this person that young man's master? The three Dao realm experts were stunned. Even though they were all third-level Dao realm experts, they felt a strong sense of danger. This person was definitely stronger than them. Furthermore, if he was really an extreme Dao cultivator, he would be even stronger. Escape. They had to escape. Senior, you must be joking. How could there be a second extreme Dao cultivator in the Nine Zones? Shua. They were smiling respectfully, but their bodies suddenly flashed as they instantly fled. They fled in three different directions. HMPH. Kingslayer snorted coldly. The three people who had been running away suddenly fell from the sky, turned into a cloud of blood mist that quickly dissipated. Their bodies and souls were destroyed. The extreme Dao isn't allowed to exist in the Nine Zones. I'd like to see who would dare to oppose me then. Kingslayer was filled with killing intent. His figure flickered and disappeared. In a certain treasure land, the fight for treasures had just come to an end. At this moment, a few familiar Dao realm cultivators were gathered together. I heard that there's a young extreme Dao cultivator in the Nine Zones? The one who spoke was a man with a cold expression. On his forehead, there were two feelers that looked like tentacles. That was enough for anyone to tell that he was a foreign race expert. The reason why he had retained his race's feelers and not completely transformed into a human was because he was proud of his race's identity, and even wanted to show off. There was no lack of such experts. These experts often said that their race had once been glorious, but had now fallen. In their hearts, they still missed the glory and pride of their race. In fact, deep down, they looked down on the human race. After all, in the long history of the Nine Zones, the human race had always been a weak race. They had not always been the overlord race. Naturally, there were many who could not accept it. It was precisely because of this that when they transformed into human form, 
they would retain some of the characteristics of their race. As time passed, this became a habit of every race. The experts gathered here were not from a single race. It's true, someone nodded, that extreme Dao cultivator is very powerful. It's said that he's invincible among his peers. That's good then. We'll find him and destroy him. The extreme Dao can't be tolerated in the nine zones, the man with the feelers said coldly. Will the human experts take revenge? Someone asked hesitantly. Don't worry. As far as I know, there are many human experts who are targeting him as well. He's alone. It seems even the human race agrees with us on this point. The rest of them nodded. As for why the extreme Dao was not allowed to exist in the nine zones, they were not very clear. All they knew was that once an extreme Dao cultivator appeared, they would be hunted down. Incidentally, extreme Dao cultivators only seem to appear among the human race. Other than that, they had heard of the legends of that one extreme Dao cultivator who had been allowed to grow and develop. Kingslayer. They could not allow a second Kingslayer to appear. These were all fifth level Dao realm experts. Just as they were about to move out, a figure suddenly appeared. He had a head of messy hair, a sharp gaze, and a blood red saber in his hand. The Dao realm experts were stunned and subconsciously became vigilant as they examined the person who had suddenly appeared. This person looked quite familiar. The next moment, they broke out into cold sweat. It was Kingslayer. It was rumored that he had even killed the human king of his own race. Just a moment ago, they had been discussing killing the extreme Dao young cultivator and talking about how the extreme Dao could not be allowed to exist in the nine zones. Moments later, Kingslayer appeared in front of them. Chapter 415 Crazy Killer, Part 2, Kingslayer. The man with the feelers opened his mouth, wanting to pay his respects. Kingslayer would not kill him on sight, right? Shua. He was wrong, and he was dead. The remaining experts began to tremble. Even Dao realm experts were afraid of death, especially when encountering a lunatic who killed without blinking. What the f asterisk ck, he killed that man without even giving him a chance to say anything. It was too terrifying. The rest of them did not dare to say a word. They did not even dare to breathe. They were afraid that they would be destroyed if they made a single move. The extreme Dao isn't allowed to exist in the nine zones? Ah, they were doomed. The lunatic had heard them. At this moment, all of them started to curse the man who had just died. Whoever dares to say that the extreme Dao cannot be tolerated in the nine zones, I'll fight them. A foreign race expert with a long face and a flat nose suddenly said in a loud voice. Senior, I swear to defend the extreme Dao with my life. Whoever doesn't respect the extreme Dao will die. As he spoke, he suddenly attacked his companion. His companion was still in shock. How could he have expected this sudden turn of events? He did not even have time to resist before he was killed. The others were all frightened and hurriedly looked at their so-called companion. They wanted to run away from him, but Kingslayer was watching, so they trembled and did not dare to move. Senior, that person disrespected the extreme Dao, so I killed him, the man said. Kingslayer nodded, very good. You have a bright future. You're ruthless and decisive. I admire you very much. The man was overjoyed. His life was safe. He knew that this kind of lunatic would not take the ordinary path. He had to use extreme means to leave a good impression. However, Kingslayer's next sentence shattered his delusions. However, my extreme Dao of slaughter is best at killing people like you who are brutal and decisive. You can go and die now. Senior, please spare. Before he could even finish begging for mercy, he was already dead. Escape. The remaining few knew that they would definitely die if they stayed. There might be a chance of survival if they escaped. Shua. Shua. Their figures disappeared in an instant as they used all their trump cards. However, a cold snort was heard. My extreme Dao is one of slaughter. How could I allow you to escape? The blood red saber swept in all directions, killing everyone in an instant. After killing them, Kingslayer left. Let's move on to the next place. Anyone who can't stand the extreme Dao shall be killed. Chu Pingfan walked out of his secluded cultivation with a gloomy face. There were more and more Dao realm experts in the nine zones, and the experts who were targeting him were getting stronger and stronger. His situation was getting more tenuous. Even if he concealed his aura and changed his identity, he would be recognized the moment he made a move. The extreme Dao was too unique. This time, he decided to lie low. He would try to pick a less contested place. Perhaps he might even be able to find an undiscovered treasure land. He cursed inwardly, just you wait, you guys deserve to die. Even now, Chu Pingfan still could not understand why everyone was targeting him so much. Was it just because he was an extreme Dao cultivator? Now that things had come to this, he could only take it on the chin and rise to the challenge. Unless he really had no other choice, he would not return to the northern zone. He was no longer a child and had to rely on himself. Not long after he left his hiding spot, he suddenly heard a piece of news. An extreme Dao cultivator, Kingslayer, was slaughtering everyone who had something against the extreme Dao. He had already killed 10 people, including 10th and 11th level Dao realm cultivators. Upon hearing this news, Chu Pingfan felt touched. 
Finally, he was no longer the only extreme Dao cultivator in the Nine Zones. Furthermore, the other party was very powerful, he was standing up for the extreme Dao. It felt good to have a senior. Chu Pingfan straightened his back, he felt that perhaps he no longer needed to hide anymore. As long as the threat of Kingslayer was present, no expert would dare to attack him, right? The crazy killer had entered the calamity, stirring up trouble like a stone hurled into a bucket of water. Countless people who had been preparing to target Chu Pingfan were all trembling in fear. It was too terrifying. Somewhere in the desolate ancient zone, Kingslayer's killing intent was so strong that it was almost tangible. Two other people opposite him spat out blood and retreated. One of them was an expert from the Tianyue Tower, while the other was an expert from the Heavenly Temple. They were both 12th level Dao Realm experts, however, even if they joined forces, they were not his match. You guys are just ants, yet you dare to target me, an extreme Dao cultivator. From today on, anyone who dares to bully the weak and target extreme Dao cultivators will face my wrath. Kingslayer was extremely overbearing. The spectating experts were all terrified. He was too powerful. The killing intent was almost tangible. They felt like that it would cut them to pieces if they got too close. Kingslayer, you were only a 12th level Dao Realm expert, do you actually think you were invincible? The expert from the Tianyue Tower said angrily. HMPH, I might not be invincible, but so what? Who dares to bully me? Do you really think that I don't have anyone to back me up? Kingslayer was not afraid at all. There were many top Dao Realm experts in the Great Dao Communication Group. There were even Dao Yuan Realm experts. What was there to be afraid of? They did say that the group members should support each other. They won't just ignore me because I'm an extreme Dao cultivator, right? If that happens, then I'll just have to bring out Master's name, and see who would dare to ignore me. You're not qualified to talk to me. Get Tian Yu to come instead. Kingslayer's killing intent grew stronger and stronger. In an instant, it seemed to have reached its limit. At this moment, Kingslayer gained insight into what Chu Zan had said to him previously. This was the true path of the extreme Dao. The experts from the Heavenly Temple and the Tianyue Tower spat out blood and retreated. They could not hold on any longer. Their faces were filled with shock. Kingslayer was getting stronger. Shua. A figure appeared. Kingslayer, stop. Don't force us to suppress you. Shut up. Come at me together. There are many people here who want to kill me. Come on then. If I die here today, you can target the extreme Dao as much as you want. As soon as he said that, a few figures appeared. They were all foreign race experts. He was right. Everyone here wanted to kill him. They were all afraid of this lunatic. Kill. That person no longer hesitated and attacked. The others looked at each other briefly before attacking. This was a great opportunity to kill Kingslayer. In an instant, eight 12th level Dao realm experts surrounded Kingslayer. Good. Kingslayer was not afraid at all. His blood red saber swept out, and his killing intent swept out. The mountains collapsed, and the spatial cracks suddenly appeared. Were it were for the fact that the nine zones had recovered to their peak and the great Dao Yuan calamity was ongoing, the spatial cracks would have devoured the mountains and everything around them. Thankfully, though, the spatial cracks were closed almost immediately after they appeared. The onlookers were all frightened and retreated. Kingslayer was too terrifying. Eight experts of the same realm surrounded him, yet he was not at a disadvantage. Was this the power of the extreme Dao? Ying Kong was hiding in the crowd. He exclaimed in his heart, so this is Kingslayer. He was 2F asterisk C King powerful. When would he ever become as powerful? At the same time, he started to worry. Kingslayer was strong, but the eight people who had surrounded him were not weak either. He would not be killed, right? Kingslayer is being surrounded and attacked. Are there any seniors who can intervene? Ying Kong sent a message into the Great Dao Communication Group. Chapter 416 The Extreme Dao, Part 1 The Great Dao Communication Group instantly became lively. Kingslayer has been surrounded and attacked? Is he dead? What has this lunatic done this time? The guys in the group seem to be gloating. Ying Kong was speechless. Kingslayer was not very popular, unlike him, who kept calling polishing everyone's shoes. If he was in trouble, the big shots in the group would help him, right? Brother Kingslayer was standing up for the extreme Dao. He offended some people, and started fighting, Ying Kong explained. Is there a senior who can intervene? He asked. Among those in the group, there was no one who had a grudge against the Kingslayer. Luo Xinbai was the only one who was not happy with Kingslayer and wanted to teach him a lesson. After all, he was once a human king, and Kingslayer had killed Feng Kong. This was a special trait of the human race. After all, some human kings did not originate from strong backgrounds. Without backers, they would be easily targeted, especially after entering the Dao realm. As every human king was an outstanding talent of their generation, there was a tacit understanding between the human kings. The former human kings were the backers of the later human kings. If an expert were to attack a human king, the former human kings would definitely interfere. As time passed, it became taboo for anyone to attack the human king. One had to know that in the long history of the human race, no one knew exactly how many human kings there were. 
Hong Yuanchu was one of the Daoyuan realm experts who had been a human king. As such, he too could be considered a backer. It's too late, right? Who has entered the Nine Zones? Even if we move now, I'm afraid that Kingslayer will be dead by the time we arrive. Let's mourn for him. Many people in the group were willing to help. However, many of them had not left the primordial land and entered the calamity. Ying Kong glanced at the ongoing battle and said, There's no clear winner yet. Brother Kingslayer doesn't seem to be at a disadvantage. So strong? Are those eight or half crippled? Many people in the group were shocked. They asked themselves inwardly whether they could go 1v8 against cultivators in the same realm. The answer was no, he's an extreme Dao cultivator, Kun he said, if his comprehension of the extreme Dao is deep enough, he's almost invincible among his peers. Even if he's surrounded, even if he can't win, he can still escape, he added after a pause. The extreme Dao was so powerful, many Dao realm experts were shocked. Although they had always known that extreme Dao cultivators were powerful, they had no idea to what extent it was. I once sheltered an extreme Dao cultivator, but unfortunately, he died before he could grow and develop. Kun he then snorted. He was surrounded and killed by demon race B asterisk stars. At that time, there were more than 30 people at the same cultivation level. You're spouting nonsense. How could we do such a thing? Mo Tu said angrily, it's probably some hypocrites from your human race pretending to be demons. If they admitted it, would it not be equivalent to admitting that the demon race was inferior to the human race? More than 30 people ganging up on one person. That would make them F asterisk C king garbage, right? What a joke. How could I be wrong? Were it not for your demon race obstructing me back then, how could he have fallen? The one who stopped you is probably a demon, but it doesn't prove that the ones who killed the extreme Dao cultivator were demons. I'm guessing that it might be your human race who schemed and asked the demon race to obstruct you while they killed him. Kun He and Mo Tu started quarreling. Luo Xinbai asked doubtfully, Master, why are extreme Dao cultivators always targeted? Why is the extreme Dao not allowed to exist in the Nine Zones? He was not the only one who was curious. The other Dao realm cultivators in the group were curious too. Why did everyone in the Nine Zones target extreme Dao cultivators? It was because of this that Kingslayer seemed to be the only Dao realm extreme Dao cultivator. Well, including that young man, there were now two. Chu Zan was also peeking at the group chat. He was also curious why the extreme Dao was not allowed to exist in the Nine Zones. He felt that the reason why it was easy for extreme Dao cultivators to deviate from the path was due to their environment of being constantly hunted down. Simply put, they were forced into a corner and had to take extreme measures to survive. Chapter 417 The Extreme Dao, Part 2 Even Kun he was clueless about this matter. Extreme Dao cultivators only exist among the human race, Hong Yuan Chu said. They have always been rare, not even one in a million years. The reason why they are targeted and not allowed to exist in the Nine Zones should be related to the laws of heaven and earth of the Nine Zones. That's why the living beings of the Nine Zones unconsciously target them. Hong Yuanshu was not too sure about the reason and could only provide a conjecture. Old Ghost Hong. I remember that you used to have a good friend who was an extreme Dao cultivator, right? Mo Tu asked. That's right. He died at the fifth level of the Dao realm. We still don't know who did it, Hong Yuanshu said coldly. If I find out who did it, I'll kill them. Chu Zan fell into a state of deep thought. Hong Yuanshu's conjecture made sense. Moreover, the power of extreme Dao cultivators was naturally envied by many. It made sense why other races targeted extreme Dao cultivators. After all, they would not want the human race to produce another top expert. However, why did the human race also target extreme Dao cultivators? Chu Zong could not help but think of a certain fellow who had created the human race's first cultivation technique. Was he also an extreme Dao cultivator? Was that why he was hunted down? Chu Zong felt that he needed more information to understand. In the Great Dao Communication Group, they stopped discussing this topic. Since Hong Yuanchu did not know the reason, no one else in the group would, unless Taoist brother Chu appeared. They began to pay attention to Kingslayer's battle. Ying Kong mentioned Feng Kong. Hearing this, Luo Xinbai said, I'm going to the Nine Zones. I have to teach this B asterisk star a lesson. Otherwise, he'll be too reckless. It was fortunate that Feng Kong did not die. However, as a human king, it was time for Luo Xinbai to stand out. Kingslayer was in the Nine Zones, so if he went crazy and wanted to kill Feng Kong, the latter would not be able to resist him. Luo Xinbai was a 15th level Dao realm expert. Moreover, his master was Kun He, a Dao Yuan realm expert. In that sense, he had a strong backer. 15th level Dao realm cultivators were not yet allowed to leave the primordial land. However, Hong Yuanchu and the others naturally would not stop him. Mo Tu and the other Dao Yuan realm experts would also turn a blind eye to it. They were all members of the group chat anyway. Kingslayer was very fierce. The more he fought, the stronger he became. His aura kept rising, and his killing intent became more and more intense. His extreme Dao of slaughter was growing. Chu Zan glanced at it and knew that Kingslayer was about to make a breakthrough. The Great Dao Yuan Calamity was indeed an opportunity for Kingslayer. 
It was the perfect opportunity for the Tao of Slaughter to grow. After all, there were battles and conflicts everywhere, so it was easier to break through his limits. Boom. The blood red saber slashed through the sky and killed the expert from the heavenly temple. Die. Kingslayer's aura rose to the extreme, and his extreme Tao of Slaughter transformed. He had broken through, 13th level of the Tao realm. His attackers were all shocked. They had not been able to suppress him thus far, and now he had broken through. Things were not looking good, Shua. The cocky human expert was the first to escape. Kill. Kingslayer's killing intent engulfed the surroundings, turning tangible as it sealed off the surroundings. The onlookers were all stunned. Many of them fled in a hurry. The desire to target the extreme Tao was now the last thing on their minds. This was a lunatic, but that was not the problem. The problem was that he was an invincible lunatic. Who could stop him? The eight attackers had all fallen. Ying Kong was stunned. He was too powerful. The members in the group chat were also shocked when they learned of the result of the battle. Extreme Dao cultivators were this strong. 1v8. I'm a little jealous, someone in the group chat said sourly. I finally know why everyone targets extreme Dao cultivators, it's because of jealousy. The others all agreed. Does anyone know how to start cultivating the extreme Dao? Some people were tempted. Peefed, you're not a human, so don't even think about it. Many of the non-human group members sighed. Elsewhere, saber in hand, Kingslayer said coldly. Today, I am standing up for the extreme Tao. If anyone dares to bully extreme Tao cultivators again, don't blame me for being ruthless. Extreme Tao cultivators were not afraid of fighting. The only thing Kingslayer had to do was ensure that the weaker extreme Tao cultivators would not be hunted down by those who surpassed their cultivation realms. Sweeping his gaze across the surroundings, his figure disappeared and reappeared in front of Ying Kong in a flash. Ying Kong was so scared that he almost peed himself. He thought that Kingslayer had become trigger happy and wanted to kill him. Brother Kingslayer, it's me, he said hurriedly. Kingslayer reached out his hand and patted Ying Kong's head. He shook his head and laughed arrogantly. Haha, it's little Ying. It's me, it's indeed me. Ying Kong had a helpless expression on his face. There was no helping it, he was the weakest among the group chat members. With me as your backing, whoever dares to bully you, feel free to come find me, I'll deal with them. Kingslayer patted his chest. Thank you, brother Kingslayer. Ying Kong was overjoyed. He finally had a backer. Furthermore, Kingslayer was definitely the strongest person in the Nine Zones at the moment. Okay, I'm off then. Kingslayer disappeared. Ying Kong heaved a sigh of relief and then left as well. Not long after, news of Kingslayer's battle spread, striking terror into the hearts of many, who recalled the incidents from the ancient era. Would there be a repeat of that incident? How many people would die? The Dao Realm experts who had been prepared to target Chu Pingfan all had second thoughts and were instantly terrified and no longer dared to bully the weak. After all, he had killed too many people. Of course, he had many enemies as well. There were many people hunting him down, however, no one had been able to kill him so far. Before Kingslayer was killed, no one would target Chu Pingfan. Chu Pingfan also heard of this news, he was excited. He could finally appear in the open and participate in the fight for the treasure and fate. In a battle against cultivators of the same realm, there was not a single person he was afraid of. His figure immediately flashed as he headed towards a nearby treasure land. It was rumored that there was chaotic energy there. It was time to display the power of the extreme Tao. If Kingslayer could succeed 1v8, then he would too. Chapter 418 Ancestors of the Human Race, Part 1, Chu Zan looked at the origin Tao crystal. As it continued to transform, more laws kept appearing. Then, he was surprised to discover that the origin Tao crystal suddenly gave birth to a law. It was not a great Tao law, but a heavenly Tao law. Was it not a complete copy of the great Tao? Why was there a heavenly Tao law? Did nurturing the heavenly Tao talisman affect the origin Tao crystal as well? In any case, this was a good thing. Chu Zan estimated that it would take one to two months for the origin Tao crystal to complete its transformation. He turned his attention back to the nine zones. The secret of the extreme Tao piqued his interest. Even Hong Yuanshu did not seem to know anything, which meant that its secrets were definitely from a past great Tao era. Chu Zan even suspected that the person who created the human race's first cultivation technique was an extreme Tao cultivator. Of course, this was just a conjecture. Perhaps Taoist Flying Cloud knew some of the secrets behind it, but Chu Zan chose not to ask him. After all, if he kept asking about the secrets of the human race, it would probably arouse suspicions. Extreme Tao cultivators only appeared among the human race. As such, those who knew them best would definitely be the human experts from the ancient era. However, where had they all gone? Chu Zan was actually very curious. There were no human experts in the ancient chaos world as they were all ostracized. It could be seen from this that the human race was in an awkward situation, and that they seemed to be at odds with the other races. Furthermore, the immortal, celestial, and demon races, as well as the other foreign races, all took on human-like forms after they transformed, 
which seemed to imply that the human race was probably more compatible with the Great Tao. Was it because of this that the other races targeted them? Xu Zan thought to himself as he focused his attention on Yang Tian. Yang Tian was currently a fourth-level Tao realm expert, and had been improving rapidly. He had already caught up to Ji Dexin. This was all due to that, ancestor, of his. Yang Tian was improving rapidly, but his potential had been consumed in exchange. There was no hope for him to reach the Tao Yuan realm. In a sense, it was not exactly a bad thing for Yang Tian. In any case, very few people could reach the Tao Yuan realm, so trading his future cultivation for his current status was a decent trade-off. Yang Tian was a heaven's blessed of the human race, so he was naturally protected by some of the older experts. After all, they regarded him as a future top expert of the human race. Currently, the human race had the most Tao realm experts in the nine zones. Apart from Kingslayer, there were three other twelfth level Tao realm experts. Next were the demons and monsters. The demon race Tao realm experts that emerged from the primordial land were in an awkward situation, as they were torn between which side to help between the demon race and the Buddhist clan. In the end, they decided simply to ignore it and go about their own business. After all, Mo Tu and Mo Zan had told them to keep a low profile to avoid being affected by the Great Tao Calamity. The monster race fared better, as they had obtained great fate as they fought against the ominous beings. Still, that war was far from over, and would likely persist for a prolonged period of time. Therefore, they set their sights on the other zones to try and occupy another zone for the monster race. Although the human race had the advantage now, Chu Zan was uncertain as to whether this situation would persist there appeared to be more foreign race experts above the 20th level of the Tao realm. In the meantime, Chu Zan was waiting for the person behind Yang Tian to arrive and make contact with him. He was definitely an ancient expert of the human race. He wondered if that person was an expert from the great Tao era, or a previous one. Was he once a human king? Human kings had a greater sense of belonging to the human race, and they had the desire to strengthen the human race. As for non-human king experts, it was harder to say. In the past, Many powerful human race experts had joined the immortal, celestial, and demon races. Now, some of the powerful experts of the immortal, celestial, and demon races were actually humans. However, they did not acknowledge this identity at all. They were all proud of their statuses as immortals, celestials, and demons. Yang Tian and Chu Pingfan were both heavens blessed of the human race, but they were treated differently. The foreign races would not dare to attack Yang Tian openly. They might attempt a sneak attack, but Yang Tian was cautious and did not give them a chance. Chu Pingfan, on the other hand, had suffered greatly before Kingslayer's appearance. Chu Zan's other disciples were also favored by the human race. However, they had also offended a number of powers, including the Tianyue Tower, Heavenly Temple, and Starry Sky Palace. As such, they were constantly being pursued. Chapter 419 Ancestors of the Human Race, Part 2 As for Ding Yu and Xiao Liang, they were lone wolves who did things their own way, and it was common for them to offend people. Yang Tian was fighting with a Dao Realm foreign race expert for a treasure. Both sides were unevenly matched and after two hours, there was still no winner. At that moment, Yang Tian's body trembled, and a wisp of consciousness descended into his body. The foreign race expert seized this opportunity and tried to kill him with a powerful strike. However, as soon as it touched Yang Tian, it turned into ashes. Yang Tian's forehead was covered in cold sweat. Ancestor, I almost died there. Haha, <laughs> it was just an ant. While I'm around, there's no way something like that can hurt you. Ancestor, why have you come here this time? To see the changes in the nine zones. Chu Zan looked at Yang Tian and at the wisp of consciousness. Although it was just a wisp, it could be seen that the other party was very powerful. He then looked at the northern region of the western zone. That fellow from the ancient demon race seemed to be preparing to descend with a wisp of consciousness as well. He smiled. The nine zones belonged to him. Without his consent, it was wishful thinking. Chu Zan was not in a hurry to get in touch with Yang Tian's ancestor. Instead, he was waiting for Yang Tian to ask his ancestor about the extreme Tao. Thanks to the heavenly Tao laws, he could listen in to their conversation. In fact, as long as Chu Zan needed it, he could read the thoughts of any living being under the heavenly Tao laws and control their consciousness. Of course, Chu Zan would not do that. The heavenly Tao had its own laws, and he would not rashly interfere. Everything had to follow the laws. If he meddled too much, it would affect the heavenly Tao, and even cause it to deviate. The Great Tao Yuan and Great Tao Calamities were essentially methods by which the Great Tao reset the Nine Zones. If the Heavenly Tao laws were broken, it was likely that there would be a Heavenly Tao Calamity as well in the future. Of course, the Heavenly Tao laws themselves might contain a similar mechanism anyway. The ancestor controlled Yang Tian's physical body and walked through the desolate ancient zone. His eyes flickered with light as he looked at the sky above the Nine Zones. However, he could not see anything. He felt that something was wrong, but could not tell what it was. Perhaps he was overthinking things. It was not unusual for strange things to occur during calamities. Ancestor, you said you're my ancestor, but I don't even know your name, Yang Tian said. 
You can call me whatever your surname is, Yang? Yang Tian asked, stunned. Then I'm Yang, your ancestor. No one in the Nine Zones will recognize or remember me now anyway, Yang said with a chuckle. Ancestor, how many generations are we separated by? Do I still have your bloodline? Of course you do. It's just a little thin. I'm powerful, so my descendants won't disappear even after countless years. Even if it's a little thin, when the opportunity comes, it can be purified. As Yang walked, he began to chat with this descendant from God knows how many generations apart. We're separated by several eras, but you've actually activated your ancestral bloodline. How strange. He had chosen Yang Tian for this reason, as it allowed him to easily descend with his wisp of consciousness. Otherwise, he would have to pay an even greater price to descend. Chu Zan listened in silence. The other party was called, Yang. How many eras had passed? He was indeed an ancient expert of the human race. In any case, Yang was currently just a wisp of consciousness, so he was unable to discover Chu Zan spying on him using the heavenly Tao laws. Ancestor, since the human race has such powerful experts like yourself, why are we so weak? I heard that in the past eras, the human race was a weak race, Yang Tian asked curiously. Yang remained silent for a moment before he said, the time is not right. The human race can't become strong. It can only become strong for a brief period, after which it will suffer a severe blow. The current human race may seem strong, but they're not that strong in reality. You just have to remember that the human race is still in a difficult situation. Yang Tian was even more confused. Ancestor, the human race is the overlord of the nine zones. Why would we still be in a difficult situation? You're too weak, so you wouldn't understand. The human race's current position as the overlord of the nine zones is only temporary. The nine zones will soon welcome a drastic change. Yang Tian did not understand his explanation, but since his ancestor did not continue, he did not pursue the matter. Instead, he changed the topic. Ancestor, are there many human experts like you? You little rascal. You still have a few old friends, right? Yang smiled. I'm one of the ten ancestors of the human race, he said after a pause. I'm the tenth saint of the human race. Chu Zan's heart trembled when he heard this. The tenth human to reach the Dao Yuan realm? Were the first nine still alive? If they were all alive, there would be at least ten top experts in the human race. Ancestor, there are so many supreme experts in our human race. Why are you not in the nine zones? Chapter 420 Ancestors of the Human Race, Part 3 Of the ten ancestors of the human race, only seven are left. Three of my old friends have fallen, Yang sighed. You have to remember that the human race cannot be considered true overlords just yet. It is only when we can suppress all of the other races that we will have achieved that. Another great calamity is coming, and the human race will also be oppressed, unless. Yang suddenly fell silent. Unless what? Yang Tian asked curiously. That's not something you should know. You're too curious, kid. Let me put it this way. Before the ten ancestors of the human race, there was still another person. If he was still alive. Yang smiled bitterly. Chu Zan understood. He was almost certainly referring to the first genius who had created the human race's cultivation technique. Even Yang, one of the ten ancestors of the human race, did not know if he was still alive. It was clear that he had disappeared for a long time. Was he really dead? Yang Tian then asked where Yang and the other ancestors were and why they were not in the nine zones. Yang did not answer. Yang Tian did not continue asking. Instead, he chatted about various topics and finally asked about the extreme Tao. Ancestor, something big happened in the nine zones recently. An extreme Tao cultivator stood up for a young extreme Tao cultivator and killed many experts. Why are extreme Tao cultivators always targeted? I've even seen that young extreme Tao cultivator a few times. He's a very simple and honest person who doesn't actively provoke others. However, he's always been targeted by everyone, including the human race. Logically speaking, he should be the human race's heaven's blessed. Why aren't there any human race experts standing up for him aside from that one extreme Tao cultivator? Yang was stunned. Extreme Tao? Yeah. Yang smiled and said, extreme Tao cultivators being targeted is to be expected. For other races, it's because extreme Tao cultivators only emerge from the human race, so it's only natural to want to snuff out a future enemy expert. For the human race, things are more complicated. Part of it is due to jealousy. However, it also has something to do with the laws of heaven and earth in the nine zones. Although the extreme Tao is no longer prohibited by the laws today, there will always be traces of that law left behind. Even Yang, one of the ten ancestors of the human race, felt that it was expected for extreme Tao cultivators to be targeted. The matters involving the extreme Tao were more complicated than he expected. That still doesn't fully explain why extreme Tao cultivators are targeted and not allowed in the Nine Zones. Yang Tian was curious. Yang muttered to himself for a moment. He felt that this was not a secret, and there was no harm in telling this descendant of his. Among the ten ancestors of the human race, the third ancestor is the ancestor of extreme Tao cultivators. He is extremely powerful, but his personality is also a little special. He has a rather violent temper. 
Back then, he slaughtered the experts of all races in the Nine Zones. He killed immortals, celestials, demons, dragons, and phoenixes. He killed so many of them that the laws of heaven and earth of the Nine Zones collapsed and the Great Tao shook. He was also the first of the ten ancestors of the human race to fall. Because of this, the human race was suppressed and became a weak race again. The impact of this incident was too great, and all of the races of the Nine Zones decided never to tolerate the existence of extreme Tao cultivators. Even some of the human race's experts joined in, fearing that extreme Tao cultivators would threaten their lives in the future. Honestly, I'm surprised that there are extreme Tao cultivators in this day and age. Yang Tian was shocked. Chu Zan was also surprised. That ancestor was actually so fierce. What exactly happened back then? The battle was so intense that even the laws of heaven and earth had collapsed and the Great Tao had been shaken. Could this have triggered the Great Tao Calamity? Chapter 421 Ancestors of the Human Race, Part 4 Yang only explained the reason why extreme Tao cultivators were targeted. He did not mention why the battle broke out and why the third ancestor killed the experts from all of the races. There must have been a reason for that battle. Chu Zan sighed. Somehow, the extreme Tao inheritance had survived to this day. Although things were looking grim, and they faced countless difficulties and persecution, the inheritance was not destroyed. Was someone preserving the inheritance? Chu Zan could not help but wonder if the third ancestor was really dead. Generally speaking, this kind of monstrous person was difficult to kill. In any case, Chu Zan had gotten the information he wanted, so he no longer listened into their conversation. He did not want to interfere too much with the operation of the Heavenly Tao Laws. Although Yang Tian was curious, it was Chu Zan who had incited him through the Heavenly Tao Laws to ask those questions. Yang Tian traveled around the Nine Territories, and no one knew what he was planning or thinking. The human race was not in a good situation. In the ancient chaos world, there were no humans, so Chu Zan speculated that the human race in the chaos was not in a good situation. Yang Tian's conversation with Yang had further reinforced his belief. Three of the ten ancestors of the human race had died, including the third ancestor. The first person to create the cultivation method of the human race had also disappeared without a trace and had not appeared for several eras. Perhaps he had fallen, or was trapped somewhere. Perhaps he was waiting for an opportunity. All of this was a mystery. The human race was the current overlord of the Nine Zones. However, with the expansion of the Nine Zones, the other races had the opportunity to occupy territory and expand. Still, they could not shake the status of the human race. As Yang surveyed the Nine Zones, he noticed that only a few of the once powerful demon race had survived. The rest had converted to Buddhism. These Buddhists did not seem to be a threat to the human race at all. All they did was occupy the former demon zone and stay there. Other than spreading Buddhist Dharma and building Buddhist temples, they did not seem to want to expand their territory. Even among the cultivators of the Nine Zones, they were known as the Buddhist sect and not the Buddhist race. Furthermore, the tenets and power of Buddhism had attracted many cultivators from various races. Even some humans had converted to Buddhism and cultivated Buddhist techniques. Despite this, the Buddhists did not force them to abandon their own race. All they required was a change of lifestyle and to help spread Buddhist Dharma. As such, aside from the remnant demon race, very few races had enmity with the Buddhists. The ghost race was undoubtedly the newest race to rise to prominence in the Nine Zones, and they could be found in almost every corner of the Nine Zones. Ghost race? Yang muttered to himself. Ancestor, the ghost race is too special and too powerful. I reckon that if my physical body were to be destroyed and my divine soul remained intact, I would also choose to become a ghost. Yang Tian sighed. The appearance of the ghost race had given many experts a second chance at life. Of course, the prerequisite was that their divine souls remained intact. However, the chance to continue cultivating and becoming stronger after death was undoubtedly fatally attractive. In the past, there was also a race similar to the ghost race, Yang muttered to himself. The netherworld race? Yang Tian asked curiously. Although the netherworld race was relatively unknown in this day and age, as a Tao realm expert and genius of the human race, Yang Tian now had access to a wealth of information. The netherworld race has deteriorated, they were really terrifying back then. Yang did not continue, but inwardly, he speculated that the ghost race had something to do with the netherworld race's situation. Had that person turned into a ghost? Given that person's strength, if he had not died, it was entirely possible for him to create a new race. His Tao was very special and powerful. Chu Zan looked at the northern region of the western zone. That ancient demon expert seemed eager to send a wisp of his consciousness into the nine zones. However, even if the blood fiend race was in the process of transforming into demons, they still could not bear the wisp of his consciousness. They had not reached the point of compatibility yet. Without compatibility, his wisp of consciousness would leak out and be rejected by the great Tao. The demon race Grand Elder's bloodline had been awakened and purified, but it was still lacking in terms of becoming a vessel for his wisp of consciousness. As such, he had a new target, which was Demon Buddha. Was it because of the ancient demon bloodline in his body? It seemed that the other party wanted to activate Demon Buddha's ancient demon bloodline. Chu Zan did not stop him. 
It was a good thing to awaken the ancient demon bloodline, as it would make demon Buddha stronger. However, demon Buddha was a Buddhist through and through, so the awakening of the bloodline would not change him. Ding Yu and the other disciples started to display their talent and reach the fourth level of the Tao realm, catching up to Ji Dexen. Hei Yu was even more special. Since she cultivated the heavenly Tao scripture, and the nine zones had been incorporated into the heavenly Tao laws, her fate had soared. The uniqueness of her innate divine soul was also revealed at this moment. Recently, Hei Yu obtained some very special opportunities. It seemed that someone out there wanted to make her his chess piece. Chu Zan did not interfere. Chapter, 422 Attacking the Blood Fiend Race, Part 1 Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation. Chu Zan did not mind letting others nurture his disciples. After all, everything was still under his control. This time, Yang Tian did not regain control of his body for a long time. Yang even controlled Yang Tian's body and participated in the fight for opportunities. It seemed that Yang really wanted to identify who the players were in this giant game of chess. Chu Zan had been silently paying attention and was not in a hurry to make contact. Kingslayer continued his massacre, once again displaying the power of the extreme Tao, much to the dismay of the experts of various races. The Blood Fiend race was now a tool in the hands of the ancient demon race. Since that ancient demon race expert had sent his sights of demon Buddha, there was no longer any reason to keep the Blood Fiends around. Of course, Chu Zan would not act personally. After all, the Blood Fiend race was a calamity bearing race. Defeating them would allow one to obtain great fate, so it was best if this opportunity was given to one of his own people. Chu Zan decided to cultivate and nurture the extreme Tao cultivators. Thus, he asked Chu Pingfan to kill them. There was no lack of experts among the Blood Fiends. The strongest one had even reached the eighth level of the Tao realm. Amidst the chaos and the fighting for treasures and opportunities, everyone had neglected the Blood Fiend race. Apart from Chu Pingfan, Chu Zan also ordered Kingslayer to participate in the extermination of the Blood Fiends. It was also time to destroy the strange blood flower in the ocean. No matter whose chess piece it was, it was time to harvest it and feed it to the spirit devouring flower. The blood flower had become much stronger, and had already reached the peak of the twelfth level of the Tao realm. Occasionally, it would emit spiritual energy fluctuations. The expert behind it was probably preparing to descend with a wisp of his or her consciousness. Chu Pingfan went off to hunt blood fiends, as did Kingslayer, who mainly targeted blood fiends that Chu Pingfan could not deal with. His first target was that strange blood flower. Boom. A great battle broke out. Kingslayer's powerful attacks displaced the ocean water in that area, revealing the roots of the strange flower that were connected to the ocean floor. Chapter 423 Attacking the Blood Fiend Race, Part 2 Kingslayer was trapped, and so was Chu Pingfan. In order to deal with the two extreme Tao cultivators, the Blood Fiend race mobilized everything they had. Chu Zan had been watching. The strength of the Blood Fiend race was within his expectations. After all, they had been nurtured by that ancient demon race expert. Despite the fact that their cultivation levels were weaker, the powerful secret techniques and formations passed down by that expert allowed them to fight opponents stronger than they were. Chu Zan did not interfere and just watched silently. This could be considered training for those two. If they could eradicate the blood fiend race, they would be able to obtain great benefits. Of course, this was only one part of his plan. Chu Zan was more interested in that ancient battlefield that was hidden in the northern region of the western zone. For that reason, Feng Kong had been dispatched as well. Chu Zan intended to try to create conflict between the celestial and ancient demon race experts. The battle continued for several days, and the Blood Fiend's formation was filled with dense blood-colored spiritual energy, to the point that one could no longer sense Kingslayer's presence, nor his killing intent. The experts from the various races who had been paying attention to this battle all heaved a sigh of relief. That lunatic was dead for sure this time. Elsewhere, Chu Pingfan had also been surrounded by Blood Fiends. Many people secretly felt that it was a pity that the only two extreme Tao cultivators in the Nine Zones were about to die. Perhaps the extreme Tao would truly go extinct this time. Chu Zan was the one who had prevented Chu Pingfan and Kingslayer's auras from leaking out. Even Ding Yu and Wang Luo, who were about to go to rescue Chu Pingfan, were stopped by Chu Zan. Be it Kingslayer or Chu Pingfan, they were not in danger. The situation might look desperate, but it was just a facade. Chu Zan wanted to see if anyone would step in to protect the extreme Tao cultivators when they were in danger of disappearing completely. How many more experts were hiding in the background? While Chu Zan might be able to detect any movements in the Nine Zones, the desolate ancient zone was still not under the control of the heavenly Tao laws. There were still many possibilities and unknown factors within the primordial land and heavenly domain. For example, the Ji family. Hong Yuanchu did not know much about the Ji family. He only knew that the Ji family had a Tao realm expert, but no one had opened their Tao path. However, that might not be true. The Ji family was an ancient human king's family, and their ancestors must have been one of the ancient experts of the human race. Even if their ancestor was not one of the ten ancestors of the human race, he would not be far off. 
Where had all of these ancient experts gone? It was not only the human race, but the demon race and monster race Daoyuan experts, they had all disappeared. They were not in the ancient chaos world, and there was no way that they were wandering the chaos indefinitely. There had to be some kind of scheme behind this. The largest possibility was that they were trying to circumvent the plans of the other major forces to cause an upset. Chapter 424 Attacking the Blood Fiend Race, Part 3 The Blood Fiends became more and more violent, and the battle persisted without any signs of a breakthrough. The figures of Kingslayer and Chu Pingfan could no longer be seen. Not even the slightest bit of their auras could be sensed. Many people sighed. The extreme Dao was finished. Ding Yu and Wang Luo were puzzled. What exactly was their master doing? Was he testing Chu Pingfan? In any case, since their master did not want them to help, the two of them held back. Chu Pingfan would not be in any danger. Extreme Dao cultivators were rare, but had somehow always appeared during every calamity. It had never been completely cut off. It was a common practice for most experts to leave behind an inheritance. However, Kingslayer was anything but common. On the other hand, Chu Pingfan was too young to do so. Chu Zan watched silently for any traces of abnormality. He wanted to verify his speculation. In particular, he kept an eye on the desolate ancient zone. Although the heavenly Dao laws had seeped into the desolate ancient zone, it was only a tiny bit. The heavenly Dao laws were masquerading as the laws of heaven and earth, and since the latter did not exist in the desolate ancient zone, progress was slow. Then, just as Kingslayer and Chu Pingfan were about to fall, Chu Zan sensed something strange entering the nine zones from the desolate ancient zone. As expected, there had to be a reason why the extreme Dao had been preserved up till today. There was someone guarding its legacy. The wisp of consciousness was very faint and weak, to the point that even Chu Zan had trouble tracing it. Chu Zan followed this wisp of consciousness and quietly probed. There was no result. The source of this wisp of consciousness seemed to be from a very dark place. He was unable to continue investigating. Chu Zan examined the wisp of consciousness and made a startling discovery. Only his consciousness is left in the nine zones? Is it a dead person's remnant will, or something left behind after escaping the nine zones? Chu Zan could not tell for sure. However, this wisp of consciousness was definitely from an extreme Dao expert. The thing was, the wisp of consciousness was not linked to a person. It was just a wandering wisp of consciousness. No one knew how long it had existed or where it had hidden. However, the fact that a wisp of consciousness could exist for such a long time was indicative of how powerful the other party was. He was stronger than Chu Zan, and had a Dao path that had definitely exceeded 10,000 miles. This was probably why his wisp of consciousness had survived until today. The third ancestor. Chu Zan felt that it was him. After all, no one else would bother protecting the extreme Dao. That wisp of consciousness did not go over to save Chu Pingfan or Kingslayer. Instead, it created a mystic realm in the Nine Zones and left the inheritance of the extreme Dao inside. It was likely that after Chu Pingfan and Kingslayer died, some mysterious force would guide a genius to this mystic realm to obtain the extreme Dao inheritance. Interesting. Chu Zan finally understood why the extreme Dao had never disappeared completely. Then, was the extreme Dao inheritance Kingslayer cultivated obtained from this person or another extreme Dao cultivator? Chu Zan was learning towards the latter. Otherwise, Kingslayer would not have suffered a deviation. He had probably obtained the inheritance of a much weaker extreme Dao cultivator. Then, when he exceeded that cultivator's strength, he had to forge his own way ahead blindly. Had it been the third ancestor's inheritance, Kingslayer would not have had problems even all the way up to the Daoyuan realm. The extreme Dao was very special. It was not a specific cultivation method, but simply something that was based on someone's talent and obsession over something. For example, Chu Ping Fan Saber Extreme Dao. Even if an inheritance was left behind, the inheritor would likely not cultivate the same extreme Dao. This was the difference between the extreme Dao and normal cultivation inheritances. Incidentally, Chu Ping Fan's extreme Dao inheritance came from the system and was different from other extreme Dao inheritances. In addition to his innate talent, his extreme Dao was purer. After leaving behind the inheritance, the will seemed to hesitate whether to save someone or not. The person he wanted to save was naturally Chu Ping Fan. No matter how one looked at it, Chu Ping Fan had more talent and potential. In the end, he gave up. Perhaps he was afraid of being exposed. His wisp of consciousness returned to the desolate ancient zone and disappeared into the darkness. Chapter 425 Attacking the Blood Fiend Race, Part 4 Since he had already discovered what he was looking for, there was no need for Chu Pingfan and Kingslayer to continue being in danger. Boom! Kingslayer soared into the sky and broke through the Blood Fiend encirclement in an instant, shattering their formation. Then, he began a wild massacre. Saber Chi illuminated the sky as Chu Pingfan also broke out of the encirclement. The Blood Fiends were defeated. Everyone was shocked. They had clearly seen Chu Pingfan and Kingslayer surrounded and overwhelmed, yet they had somehow survived? Moreover, their auras seemed to be getting stronger and stronger. Were they about to break through again? The blood fiends began to flee. 
Given their unique traits, they were difficult to track, which was the reason why exterminating them was not a feasible option to most. However, Chu Zan could use the heavenly Dao laws to track them. Within the nine zones, there was no way they would escape his grasp, nor the fate of being exterminated. Kingslayer and Chu Pingfan gave chase. Incidentally, Ying Kong was also in the western zone. Since it would take some time to completely exterminate the blood fiends, Chu Zan turned his attention to the transformed origin Dao crystal, which was on the verge of becoming a perfect miniature great Dao. While the majority of its laws were the laws of heaven and earth of the nine zones, there were quite a number of heavenly Dao laws, as well as its own laws, which were an amalgamation forged from the earlier two sets of laws. The origin Dao crystal had entered its final stages of transformation. Slowly, the miniature great Dao started to shrink and condense. Furthermore, it started to curve on both ends. Chu Zan was stunned. What was going on? Gradually, it actually transformed into a ring. Chu Zan frowned slightly. It turned into a ring? Why did it become a ring? He fell into a state of deep thought. The scene of the creation of the Nine Zones when he was comprehending the Chaos Scripture appeared in his mind. A great Tao was born, splitting the chaos and opening up a new world. If the great Tao of the origin Tao Crystal had become a ring, what about the great Tao of the Nine Zones? Could it be that the great Tao of the Nine Zones was also ring-shaped? Like a planet? Planet? Chu Zan was stunned. In the sky above the Nine Zones, one could see some things that looked like stars. What were those stars? Were those derived from the Great Tao, or was there a starry sky in the chaos outside the Nine Zones? As the origin Great Tao continued transforming into a ring, Chu Zan suddenly realized that he actually did not know much about the Nine Zones. Sure, he seemed to know a lot of secrets, but there were still many blind spots in his knowledge. What were the stars in the sky above the Nine Zones? Were they planets? If so, were there any living beings on those planets? To be more accurate, were there any experts? Was that where those missing Daoyuan realm experts had gone? He had no one to ask. What if this was common knowledge? Would it not be a joke if he, a super big shot, knew nothing about it? After the origin Great Dao became a ring, Chu Zan took it and put it on his wrist. It looked like a bracelet. He then removed it and placed it back inside the pocket dimension, next to the heavenly Dao talisman. Chu Zan was uncertain about how he could nurture and strengthen the origin Great Dao ring, so he simply allowed it to do its own thing. He also placed the reincarnation Great Dao next to those two. Hopefully they would augment each other's growth. Chu Zan glanced at the situation in the Nine Territories and continued to stay in the courtyard, engrossed in extending his Dao path. His body condensed from his Dao aura, was holding the heaven-splitting axe and working hard to extend his Dao path. Occasionally, he would use the ancient Chaos Mountain to stabilize his Dao path. That being said, things were not moving particularly fast. So far, he had only extended his Dao path by a hundred meters. There was still a long way to go. Chu Zan could only hope that the system would reward him with some path-opening treasures. At their current cultivation levels, it would be difficult for his disciples to trigger the system's rewards. The 61st milestone was fast approaching, so Chu Zan was cautiously optimistic for a decent reward. Currently, the rewards he received every day were of limited help in extending the Dao path. Occasionally, he would be rewarded with a few Dao transformation jade stones, which had a rather good effect. It made the Dao path more stable. However, why these were undoubtedly a rare treasure to other Daoyuan realm experts, it was so for Chu Zan. The system would reward him with a piece every three to five days, so he had plenty to go around. Chu Yi and Chu Er had entered a new transformation cycle after the origin Dao crystal completed its transformation. After this transformation, they would become much stronger, perhaps around the 15th level of the Dao realm or higher. They would likely be the first of Chu Zan's subordinates to reach the Daoyuan realm in the future. The two Buddhist attendants' strength also increased rapidly with the expansion of Buddhism in the Nine Zones. Three months later, Chu Pingfan broke through to the fourth level of the Dao realm and killed all the blood fiends who were chasing him. Kingslayer also reached the fourteenth level of the Dao realm. Their rapid increase in strength frightened many people. Was the extreme Dao so terrifying? At the same time, Feng Kong followed Chu Zan's arrangements and entered the northern region. The Jade Crystal Palace was emitting a faint halo and was surrounded by a celestial aura. There were many blood fiends in the northern region of the western zone, but they were not particularly strong, so Feng Kong slaughtered them en masse. In the end, the blood fiends in the northern region of the western zone were annihilated. Feng Kong stood in front of the dark ancient battlefield, but did not go in, it was very dangerous there. His mission was temporarily over. The Jade Crystal Palace expanded, and Feng Kong entered it to cultivate. Now, the Jade Crystal Palace and the dark ancient battlefield were side by side. Now that Kingslayer had appeared and become stronger so quickly, Feng Kong's feelings were a little complicated. He was unsure as to how he should face Kingslayer. In the past, he had a good relationship with the latter, and had fought several times on the same battlefields. They could be considered comrades to some extent. However, Kingslayer changed after that, which seemed to be around the time he became an extreme Dao cultivator. 
In the battle after that, he had tried his best because he felt that he had the responsibility to stop Kingslayer from killing more experts. This was to prevent the human race from becoming vulnerable to the attacks of other races. In the end, he lost. He had become the one with the worst ending out of all the human kings. Still, Feng Kong now roughly understood Kingslayer's situation and why he challenged and killed the strong. In the stone house inside the dark ancient battlefield, a wisp of consciousness trembling with anger. The blood fiend race that he had painstakingly cultivated had actually been completely annihilated. The northern region of the western zone had fallen. His wisp consciousness arrived at the edge of the dark ancient battlefield and spotted the jade crystal palace. He was getting angrier. Damn old man, you dare to ruin my plan? The wisp of consciousness transmitted its voice over. Feng Kong heard it, but ignored it. However, he was a little curious. What was the Lord planning? He seemed to be targeting these unknown and powerful existences. Good, very good. The wisp of consciousness flew into a rage and retreated back into the dark ancient battlefield. Without a vessel, his will could not be exposed to the nine zones, or it would be rejected by the great Tao. 